Now to engage in the discussion, please raise your hand. For those wearing masks, please remember to speak into your microphones loudly and clearly so everybody can hear you. And for those that are not wearing masks, I'd also encourage you to do that. And finally, remember to identify yourselves when making comments or asking questions. And with that, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Regent President Peterson. Here. Regent Vice President Greeny. Here. Regent Atwell. Here. Regent Bechtel. Here. Regent Bogus. Here. Regent Cologne. Here. Regent Jones. Here. Regent Klein. Here. Regent Lovezo. Here. Regent Many Deeds. Here. Regent Miller. Here. Regent Peterson. Here. Regent Rye. Regent Saffold. Here. Regent Stanford Taylor. Here. Regent Tucker. Here. Regent Walsh. Here. Regent Weatherly. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. As we consider items on today's agenda, are there board members who wish to declare any conflicts of interest regarding today's open session agenda? Seeing none, let's proceed. We'll go to item three, which is to start our uh, reports from committees. And we'll start with the education committee and I'll turn it over to the chair, Regent Klein, to provide that report right now. Regent Many Deeds is gonna provide the report um, since he chaired the meeting on my behalf. Very good. I attended and chaired. Regent Many Deeds is the education yeah, committee agree. yesterday, the most exciting committee. <laughs> yes, I will, Regent President Peterson. Uh, our education uh, committee met and uh, accepted the first reading of a revised mission statement, received three presentations and approved 10 resolutions uh, as follows. The first of a two-part review and approval process uh, involved UW Whitewater seeking a first reading of its revised mission statement. Provost Greg Cook provided committee members with an overview of both the approval process and contents of the revised mission statement. The campus will seek final approval from the Board of Regents at a future meeting Accordingly, this agenda item was informational only. In June of each year, region approval is the final step in the process by which our faculty members receive promotion and tenure. Thus, the Education Committee reviewed and approved the 2021 report on faculty promotions, tenure designations, and changes of status. Vice President Morabel Sosa provided us with an overview of this year's report which ind indicated that 151 faculty members across the UW system have earned tenure. We sincerely wish to congratulate each of them for this important accomplishment. Next, President, Vice President Morabella Sosa provided an update on the UW System Office of Educational Opportunity. The Vice President also introduced a, presenta a presentation from the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction on state <laughs> funding for charter schools. Next, the committee welcomed a host of campus presentation from UW Milwaukee Provost Johannes Ritz uh, after Vice President Morabella Sosa delivered an update on two UW system initiates, <coughs> excuse me, initiatives, which she is leading on behalf of President Thompson. They include UW System Prison Education Initiative and the Distance Education Initiative. Finally, the committee reviewed an update on the Freshwater Collaborative of Wisconsin from Executive Director Marissa Jablonski. Notably, the business of the committee also included approval of six new academic degree programs, as well as the annual request for funding from the Vilas Trust Fund. Specifically, action items included approval of a Bachelor of Business Administration in Entrepreneurship from UW Eau Claire, a Bachelor of Business Administration in Human Resource Management at UW Eau Claire, a Bachelor of Business Administration in Operations and Supply Chain Management, UW Eau Claire, a Master of Science in Sports Leadership at UW Madison, a Bachelor of Business Administration in General Business, UW Milwaukee, a Bachelor of Science in Neuroscience at UW Milwaukee, a Bachelor of Science in Strength and Conditioning at UW Oshkosh, the annual request for funding for the Violist Trust Fund for UW Madison and UW Milwaukee. Uh, this concludes my report. So, therefore, I move adoption by the board of resolutions C1 through 9 and resolution E. Thank you, Regent Manides. We have a motion. May I have a second? Second. Second, Regent Walsh. Discussion of committee members related to the Education Committee's business of yesterday. Okay, seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you, Ed. We'll now move on to the report of the Capital Planning and Budget Committee. Uh, I'll call on Mike Jones, Regent Jones, to present a report of CP and B at this time. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. The Capital Planning and Budget Committee met yesterday and received an excellent presentation by UW-Milwaukee's Vice Chancellor for Finance and Administration, Robin Van Harpen, entitled UWM's Capital Outlook, Meeting Wisconsin's Needs into the Future. Her presentation described UW-Milwaukee's space deficiencies and the various campus planning efforts that led to their six-year capital plan. Her presentation provided an update to their 2019-21 approved projects, as well as an overview of their 2021-23 capital budget request. Senior Associate Vice President Alex Rowe gave an update regarding the results of an RFP issued last November for real estate advisory services. 14 responses were received and a selection team comprised of representatives from four UW institutions, including two chancellors and one community mayor interviewed 11 firms. At the conclusion of the evaluation process, six firms were selected and put under contract. The three phases of the advisory services are first, identification and development of opportunities and market feasibility analysis. Second, development of an RFP to select a real estate team to advance the project and assist in the evaluation of the financial aspects of the project. And third, recommendations and negotiation of any final partnership agreements. The committee next received a semi-annual report on the status of leasing activity since December 1st, 2020. Two new leases were executed and another five were either renewed, amended, or terminated. The entire UW system leases about 1.8 million square feet on an annual basis. Then the committee received a semi-annual status report on UW managed capital projects. The program's overall value increased by about $23 million in the last six months for a total of $172 million. Finally, Associate Vice President Alex Rowe provided a summary of recent building commission actions and an update on the progress of UW Systems 2021-23 capital budget request. Since we had no action items on our agenda, we have no resolutions to offer the board. That concludes my report. Thank you, Regent Jones. Next, I'll call upon Regent Atwell to present a report of the Research, Economic Development and Innovation Committee. Regent Atwell. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. The Ready Committee reviewed and approved the minutes of our April 8th, 2021 meeting, and the committee members heard some fascinating presentations. First, we heard an update from Host Campus UW-Milwaukee, which demonstrated the Urban Research University's impressive work in building collaborations with several of its first-in-class business partners and global collaborators. Chancellor Mark Money set the stage for this presentation. He and Jennifer Abley, UWM's Senior Executive Director of Strategic Partnerships, provided an overview of the Office of Strategic Partnerships, including its vision, value proposition, and results. Additionally, they highlighted three key program initiatives, the Northwestern Mutual Data Science Institute, led by Dr. Purish Papapla, and Higher Education Regional Alliance, HERA, and Tech Ed Frontiers. It's worth noting these programs are successful because they are based on research and designed specifically to address the growing needs of employers seeking to attract and retain skilled talent. We were then joined by Sam Rickers, Deputy Secretary and COO of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. Uh, and he joined the UW team, UWM team to highlight the power of university, industry, government collaboration. Notable WEDC partnerships with UWM include the Connected Systems Institute, which we all had the uh, impressive pleasure to, uh, to tour last night, uh, the Freshwater Collaborative, and numerous small business development efforts. These programs and countless others help to build capacity and provide vital support for the state's economic ecosystem, and they set the stage for strong recovery and growth. Our next agenda item showcased a pioneering collaboration between UW Green Bay and Microsoft LinkedIn. Chancellor Michael Alexander provided an overview of his university's continuing efforts to reimagine education. 
As part of this process, UW-Green Bay has introduced an innovative collaboration with Microsoft's TechSpark program and LinkedIn. This groundbreaking initiative provides online professional development opportunities for university faculty and staff and expands career connections for UW-Green Bay students. It also delivers LinkedIn learning programming across the university's four campus community. The chancellor was then joined by his provost, Dr. Kate Burns and HR team leader, Melissa Nash, who both emphasized the importance of increasing the utilization of existing platforms available through Microsoft. This approach provides accessible tools through LinkedIn for expanding classroom tutorials, <laughs> offering low cost remedial learning opportunities and introducing leadership development modules for students and staff to use when it, when it fits their schedules. Microsoft's Michelle Schuler noted the practicality of this approach using familiar online tools and existing networks and infrastructure. This approach is now being piloted at other higher educational institutions in Wisconsin and on several other states. And finally, we heard an update from WISIS on innovation occurring on our comprehensive universities across the UW system. WISIS is, as a reminder, is the technology transfer entity authorized by the Board of Regents to advance promising research and innovation from discovery through commercialization at our 11 four-year comprehensive universities. Over the past year, even with the pandemic, the campus-based network of WISIS regional associates and student ambassadors has continued to expand in-person and virtual support channels for faculty, staff, and students. WISIS board chair, David Ward, and WISIS system president, Arjun Sanja, provided an update of current programs and highlighted successful campus initiatives. Now in its 21st year, WISIS was originally established using WARF's successful model to support faculty research and innovation occurring beyond the flagship campus in Madison. Today, WISIS serves more than 100,000 primarily undergraduate students and their faculty mentors. And today, more than one third of the patents and inventions filed with WISIS come from undergraduate students. It's worth noting that WISIS draws an increasingly strong level of support, both financial and in kind, from community and business partners who collaborate with faculty and students to discover new paths for commercializing products and building innovation businesses. It's also worth mentioning that Wharf, WISIS, and UWM Research Foundation closely collaborate today and are responsible for overseeing the research output coming from the labs, the classrooms, and the field locations across the UW system. Regent Predis, President Peterson, this concludes my report. Thank you, Regent Atwell. We'll now move on to the Audit Committee. I'll call on Regent Walsh, Chair of the Committee, to present a report and resolutions from the Audit Committee. Regent Walsh. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. The Audit Committee met yesterday morning. Chief Audit Executive Lori Stortz reviewed the progress to date on the fiscal year 2021 audit plan. She confirmed that her office is making excellent progress and that most of the audits are complete. Ms. Stortz then provided a high-level summary of the results of audits recently issued by the Office of Internal Audit. This included executive summaries for the Incident Response Audit, the Emergency Grant Aid Payments to Students under the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act 2021 Audit, the Internal Assessment, and the Self-Assessment Report for the Office of Internal Audit. Overall, she was pleased with responses from management. Ms. Stortz then presented the proposed fiscal year 2022 audit plan, which was approved by the audit committee. Lastly, Ms. Stortz reaffirmed the independence statement for the Office of Internal Audit. Chief Compliance Officer Katie Ignatowski and Youth Protection Compliance Administrator Pernicia Clifton gave an update concerning pre-college and youth protection, explaining that every campus now has a designated pre-college liaison. Title IX and Cleary Administrator Sarah Harebo requested the committee approve revisions made to Regent Policy Document 14-2, Sexual Violence and Sexual Harassment, which we supported. 
Associate Vice President for Information Security, Catherine Meyer, gave an update to the Committee on Information Security, outlining the long-term and short-term actions being taken. Risk Management Director Angela Ryan gave the committee an update on internal controls and enterprise risk management. She shared a heat map that outlined the various risks to the UW system made with feedback provided by the campuses. I move to approve Resolution D3, the Fiscal Year 2022 Audit Plan, and Resolution E2, approving revisions to Regent Policy Document 14-2, Sexual Violence and Sexual Harassment. Regent President Peterson, that concludes my report. Chair Walsh has a motion on the floor. May I have a second? Second, Re Regent Jones. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just a quick question. We've had a lot of focus on information technology. Uh, it sounds like you had a pretty thorough update yesterday. Without getting too granular, can you just tell us, are you feeling good about where we're at as it relates to our information technology activities? Well, one of the questions I had was they, they discussed something, for those of you who might not know, called a tabletop audit of uh, uh, computer systems. And my question to them was, do we ever hire outside firms to come in and actually try to break in? And they have been doing that. And I think we can feel pretty good about that process and the way it works. So we have a long way to go. We need funding for computer security. Uh, and you know, President Thompson stopped by our meeting yesterday and talked about his frustration with this. The, the money we received is really a drop in the bucket. And you know, we don't want to become hacking central, um, which is, you know, that, that would not be a distinction for the system we'd like to see. So we are moving. They're doing good work, but the resources would be so important if we really want to make the computer systems in the system safe. If you look at headlines in the last two weeks, the, yeah, anyone who reads the, the preponderance paper. of this uh, is prevalent, and you know our investments in back office IT systems have been uh, rather paltry, and you know it makes us exposed with our Byzantine system. So I'm glad that we're continuing that focus, and I have confidence that the audit committee's uh, oversight will continue. Thank you, Chair Walsh. Uh, I'll now call on Regent Bechtel to present a report of the Business and Finance Committee. Regent Bechtel. Uh, do we need to move the? Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes, let's call that question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Thank you, Regent Bechtel. Okay. The floor I'm, is yours. I'm ready. I'm still ready. <laughs> <laughs> Me Thank too. you. Uh, good morning, colleagues. The Business and Finance Committee convened yesterday morning to consider June's agenda items. <clears throat> we called roll. There are no absences and no conflicts of interest were noted. We approved the April minutes, and then we moved into a discussion with UW-Milwaukee's Vice Chancellor of Finance and Administrative Affairs, Robin Van Harpen. Uh, she gave an excellent presentation that included a high-level overview of the finances and strategic initiatives designed to meet the challenges presented by COVID-19, the, the, its impacts, and the budget constraints. She went on to provide details on some of the 27 initiatives developed, focusing on student financial support, DE&I, and digital transformation as examples. Finally, she emphasized UW-Milwaukee's continuous effort to improve financially and administratively in support of the students and to the benefit of the state of Wisconsin. And I think we all appreciate that unique balance of access and R1 research that the university does here at UWM. Um, and Robin made a point to kind of go through that you know, we have a pretty high propensity, about 35% of the undergrad students at UWM are what are defined as low income undergrads. And as you kind of move across the table and you look at the GPR per student, um, UWM gets kind of a, um, they probably could use more support in that area when you compare them to the other R1 and the other comprehensives. Uh, they've got some challenges on tuition. And then when you run it all the way across the page and you look at what those students are facing in terms of the unmet financial needs, uh, we do have a problem uh, that I think seeks a solution here at UWM to try to support these students. We say that we support DE and I, I believe we all do, uh, but there's some students here on this campus in particular that need some additional support. Um, that got us into a discussion about the existing formula that's used by the regents and that is set by regent policy in terms of GPR. Um, my understanding is that for over 20 years, uh, the formula has not been reviewed or, or, or looked at. And I think just as, as, as a matter of prudent due diligence uh, as a financial institution and in serving our fiduciary role, it's probably time for us to, to look at that formula and make sure that in today's environment, uh, we are properly 
morally, ethically, and being financially responsible, what way we allocate those dollars out. And our committee is going to be asking President Thompson and his team uh, to review that formula. Um, we can take uh, this issue and report back out or, or however we choose to do this as a board, but we think it's high time to review this issue. I don't know any other, but anyone else, any comments or okay. what he said. <laughs> All right. um, we then went into uh, Interim finance vice chancellor for administrative and finance, Rob Kramer, presented four contracts and made himself available to answer questions uh, on these contracts for the committee. And a real shout out goes to the University of uh, Wisconsin and Madison uh, for providing, again, uh, as a premier R1 research institute, uh, some of these contracts, and they're, they're quite exciting. Uh, the first was to amend an, ex an existing consulting agreement with Welch Allen. That's a medical mm -hmm. device company that specializes in ocular examination. Under the agreement, UW Fundus Photograph Reading Center will continue assisting Welch Allen for an additional year in a study evaluating the accuracy of an artificial uh, intelligence software for detecting referable diabetic retinopathy. This extension increases the total funding above the $1 million level uh, threshold for board consideration. The second contract is an amendment, again, to an existing service agreement with a medical in imaging company Perspective Diagnostics. UW-Madison's Department of Radiology Medical Image Research Support continues to provide analysis of, of D-identified magnetic resonance elastography, MRE data sets provided by Perspective relative to liver disease on this, in this occasion. Extending the agreement through January 2023 increases the contract value to an estimated $1 million. So again, it meets our jurisdictional threshold. Next, Mr. Kramer presented a master service research agreement with Canon Medical Systems. Under this agreement, UW-Madison's Departments of Radiology and Medical Physics will develop methods for conducting image-guided, minimally invasive surgical interventions in a wide-bore computed tomography scanner. Initially, this contract will last three years. Total funding will be up to 600,000, but it may exceed $1 million. So again, that's why we're reviewing this. Final UW-Madison contract presented is a service agreement with Sonata Therapeutics. Sonata is an Australian company. They work on developing therapeutic stem cell platform technology using discoveries made again at UW-Madison. The stem cell starting material is developed from adult human donors. Weissman Biomanufacturing will provide manufacturing services for a cell therapy product that's being evaluated for the treatment of various diseases, including COVID-19. Graft versus host disease, host disease, excuse me, and osteoarthritis. The contract value for this contract is $1.2 million with a term extending until completion of services or earlier termination. Then we went on to uh, review a contract with Zoom Video Communications. Uh, Brent Tilton made himself available to answer questions from the committee on this contract. Uh, we had quite a bit of discussion about this contract and its uh, utility. Under the contract, Zoom will provide licenses to all faculty, staff, and students across the UW system for both administrative and academic purposes. Zoom will be the foundational web conferencing tool across the UW system, consolidating standalone contracts currently in place. This is going to save about $340,000 by kind of bundling this into one contract. Um, and as you know, Region President Peterson, this is a move that we continue to make across the system to find efficiencies and scale, uh, which we think is most important. The initial three-year contract on this contract totals $2.2 million and includes three optional renewals, renewals, each covering a two-year period at a cost of roughly $1.5 million in each biennium. In addition to the annual cost savings, the contract will optimize efficiency, again, by standardizing that tool set across the institutions. We also had some side conversation or in committee conversation about the utility of this uh, uh, of Zoom uh, to help deliver some behavioral health uh, uh, services to the students, which we know is very much in need. Next, uh, Vice President for Capital Planning and Budget, Alec Rowe, provided a briefing on real estate advisory services. This was also done in Regent Jones Committee on uh, Capital Planning and Budget. Uh, both committees are going to be looking at this issue, and as the need arises, some will come with come before business and finance, some will come before the capital planning. 
Um, and so we'll just kind of be writing together on this issue. In collaboration with the UW System Administration, UW institutions who have identified real estate opportunities may access advisory services from six different firms in a pool of advisors that have all been vetted through an RFP. These advisory services would support three phases of development, identification of the develop, development opportunity and market feasibility, development of a solicitation to solicit a real estate developer, uh, and recommending an ownership model uh, to assist in negotiation of partnership agreements. Again, the move toward allowing campuses to find some alternative revenue sources uh, to meet the needs of their students, faculty, and communities. <clears throat> UWSA Executive Director and Operations Manager Charles Sanders provided the highlights of the Trust Fund's quarterly investment report for the period ending March 31, 2021. As of that date, UW System Trust Fund's assets totaled $689.9 million, with $540.5 million in the long-term fund and $149.4 million in the income cash fund. Public equity investments increased 5.3%, bond investments returned minus 4.27%, and the inflation sensitive investments uh, returned about negative um, 0.38%. Overall, the long term fund increased in value uh, by just about 2% before fees, while the UW fund custom benchmark increased 1.95%. The income cash fund gained 0.02% for the period. So, in conclusion, on behalf of the Business and Finance Committee, I would now move for the approval of agenda items C, E, F, G, H, and I. Chair Bechtel has made a motion. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Regent Bogost. Uh, any additional discussion? Yes, Regent Atwell, I'll start Just, with you. Um, you know, I was invited by Scott to kind of weigh in on the discussion we had about uh, the formula. And I did want to say a couple of things that I don't think it was the, the committee's intention to try to say what the outcome of revisiting the formula should be. But rather, I think there was a strong feeling on the part of the committee membership that um, we need to better align what we say about UW Milwaukee's sort of unique mission, not unique, but somewhat unique mission as an urban access institution uh, within the system and how our resources are allocated in light of what it means for that institution to be both urban access and R1. And um, I think there was a strong sense that the challenges that Milwaukee as a community has faced and the role of UWM in addressing those well-documented problems of disparity and, and racial issues in Milwaukee, um, you know, this is of interest not just to the Milwaukee region, but to the entire state. And so I think we felt the challenge to have the courage to look at something that occasionally comes up, this formula, and I think it sort of causes fear because lots of institutions would like to revisit that formula. Uh, but I think it takes courage for us to say, you know what, let's figure out where that thing came from, how it got there, and have the courage to look at where it should go because it's important, of great importance to Milwaukee, to the people across the state, but especially to those children and families uh, who, who we're not doing everything we can to provide the access that we say is so important. So um, it, it's ultimately those souls, those people, those persons, and not just the ones who are here at UW-Milwaukee, but I'm thinking about the ones who aren't here and should be. Thank you, Regent Atwell, Regent Cologne, and then Regent Klein. Hector. Thank you uh, so much, uh, President. Uh, when was the last time this board took a look at the funding formula? I think as uh, Regent Bechtel said, it's been many decades. There's been some alterations in limited instances, I think, for performance funding, but by and large, you know, I would say funding formula is one component of the overall UW system budget, but it's been uh, some time. I would just say that I think this could be the biggest uh, single initiative that this board takes on that would really address equity, diversity, inclusion. And so I would be very much in favor of, of taking a look at this and making sure that um, Milwaukee is not negatively impacted the way it has been for, for decades now. Um, when Milwaukee does well, the rest of the state does well. 
I also would be very interested in making sure that there's a way to work on this where the UW system as a whole is, is not negatively impacted. So, Regent Klein. Yes, and um, thank you, Regent President Peterson. Um, and uh, to my friends, uh, Regent Atwell and Regent Cologne, I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly. Um, you know, when I came to this board, you know, we always talked about the Wisconsin idea and my husband said, well, it's like the, pl the Pledge of Allegiance in the state of Wisconsin. And, you know, and it really is for those of us who've graduated from the system and who are part of part of this conversation. Um, you see it in action when you sit on this board um, all the time. And as a lifelong resident of the Milwaukee area, and I practiced law downtown uh, for 36 years, um, I, I certainly see the challenges. I, you know, I'm a worker with uh, Chancellor Mone on, on many community organizations. I see the challenges. I see our business community try to rise to those, to, 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 to fix, to mend, to work for good. Um, and I've come to view it not just as a challenge, but as an opportunity for this state. Um, last night we went, um, and I, I realized it was funny because I didn't put two and two together. Here is Jennifer Avely as the head of strategic partnerships at UWM and what, you know, what she's, you know, not just alone, but what they've been able to put together is this connected systems Institute, which I think we all agreed was just an outstanding benefit to business in this state An outstanding benefit could be used in so many ways. And I was with, um, Regent Ryan, we were saying, well, here in healthcare, here are other ways this could be used. It was tremendously motivational and, what I'd like to say is there there are challenges, and yes, to me it's some uh, it's an issue of morality, but it's also it's how silly can we be not to understand, as Regent Cologne said, that as as Milwaukee goes, so goes the state, and that it's it's not about this region versus that region. We're in this kind of as common workers. Milwaukee's success impacts the entire state. And Milwaukee, uh, UWM is our best way of propelling the, the city of Milwaukee. And it's, it's, it's important business base and it's important population base. So what I would say is, you know, there, there are challenges and we, you know, we who work in the Milwaukee business community see them every day. And, you know, it's, it, there's amazing optimism. There's an amazing, you know, we're all going to pull together and do this. But the way the state impacts this, I think most directly is support for UWM. And so I would go beyond what uh, my, my good friend, Regent Becknell um, suggested, which is a look at the allocation formula. I would I would suggest that we, the regions, it's high time we engaged in some strategic planning, and you know, you know, whoever the new new president is, ca call them, call the meeting, bring us all together for strategic planning, open session. Let's have that conversation about where UW system is going. I noted and I read that um, Representative Roth um, wrote a, a fairly extensive plan on how we might be able to meet future needs of the state. We ought to be engaging in that dialogue. We ought to be looking at the opportunities that Milwaukee presents. And we we ought to be really focusing on uh, what I think Governor Thompson has is, is put at the forefront during his tenure, which is how do we propel the economy of the state of Wisconsin? Because that's the unique role UW system has in this state, and that is the unique opportunity that we have as regents is to, to lend our voice to that effort. So sorry to go on and on, but it's emotional for me and it's important. And I hope that we can get to strategic planning on this topic. You know, I would just say you've got to give credit to Chancellor Modi yesterday for talking about the data, bringing the data before us. You know, this board celebrates, as we will shortly do, all of the academic excellence, all of the performance of our campuses, but we also have to challenge the challenges and find new opportunities. And this is a great opportunity for us to revisit how the city of Milwaukee goes as the state goes. I think the comments here are reflective of that. I think Chancellor Mone did a very good job of illustrating all of the successes that take place on this campus, but all of the areas for opportunity. We talk about GPR funding, we talk about things like the Promise scholarships that we put forward in our budget. 
that would create one element of success related to all of our campuses, but notably Milwaukee. There are so many others. I think the recommendations to continue to look at how we best place our resources as a board uh, is well served. Any other comments on this, this item, the items before the Business and Finance Committee? Thank you for the discussion. I'll call the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That completes our committee reports. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, chairs. Next on our agenda is the Board of Regents Academic Staff Excellence Award and an opportunity to recognize outstanding work being done by academic staff across the UW system. There are more than 14,000 academic staff throughout the UW system, the university's largest sector of employees. Just like in April, we again have a double header here. Because of the pandemic, we were unable to present last year's recipients with their awards, so we'll have an opportunity today to recognize the winners from both 2020 and this year's 2021 winners. To lead us in the awards presentation, I'll turn the floor over to the chair of the awards selection committee, Regent Karen Walsh. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. This award is particularly close to my heart as I was an academic staff member at UW-Madison for 23 years. Um, so I'm very familiar with the important, challenging work that our academic staff members perform for us every day. They were particularly, particularly courageous during COVID. All of our staff members were. Um, but I'd like just to shout out for that, and you'll be hearing about some of that work as we go forward. So I'm very pleased we welcome here today our distinguished guests, the recipients of both the 2020 and 2021 Regents Academic Staff Excellence Awards. We also welcome their families, friends, and colleagues joining us for this virtual award presentation today. With these awards, we, the Board of Regents, salute the hard work, dedication, and innovative thinking of our talented academic staff members. We're honored to recognize individuals and programs that have helped to make our UW institutions second to none. Their outstanding work, along with the work of academic staff system-wide, helps to strengthen and invigorate not only our UW institutions, but communities in which they serve. First, we will honor the 2020 recipients, two academic staff members and one academic program. Thank you, recipients, for your patience. As uh, Dean, Regent President Peterson stated, we postponed last year's ceremony due to, well, I don't have to say why. But we definitely have some experience now with holding an award ceremony virtually. We can finally give you the recognition you deserve. If anyone wants to learn a little bit more about our award winners, I invite you to check out their profiles on the Board of Regents website. Brief housekeeping note. At the time when the 2020 recipients were selected, Regents Janice Mueller, Bob Atwell, and the late Jose Delgado were members of the selection committee with Jan as the chair. I'd like to thank my fellow regents who are currently on the committee who will be doing double duty in helping to present the 2020 awards this morning. Regents Mike Jones, Chris Peterson, and Corey Saffold. And I'll call you forward now so we can keep this moving. Chairing this selection committee was both gratifying and challenging because so many academic staff do exemplary work throughout the system. I so appreciate their efforts and every region on this board appreciates their efforts. Regent Chris Peterson will introduce our first award. Thank you, Regent Walsh. It is my privilege to present the first 2020 Board of Regents Academic Staff Excellence Award in the individual category to Janice Meyer, Community Engagement Director at UW Superior. Janice is the founding director of the university's new Center for Community Engaged Learning. This new center promotes the high impact practice of students taking what they have learned in the classroom and applying it to real world settings. Over the past decade, Janice has made these opportunities available to students in 26 disciplines across 12 academic departments. The impressive result includes more than 11,500 hands-on community-based learning experiences and $4.2 million of donated time to community partners. UW Superior students have provided more than 200,000 hours of service, 
including helping small businesses with marketing plans, creating websites for nonprofits, and mentoring children in outreach programs. Thanks to Ms. Meyer's leadership, UW Superior actively contributes to Campus Compact, a national organization that promotes student civic engagement. And in 2020, UW Superior earned the prestigious National Carnegie Community Engagement Classification, one of only 234 universities in the nation to hold such a distinction. Janice generously shares her time and expertise presenting at state, national, and international forums. She serves on numerous off-campus boards and teams, including the City of Superior Economic Development Team, the Pathways K-12 Initiative, and Northward, which stands for Northwest Wisconsin Educators for Regional Development. UW Superior Chancellor Renee Wachter offered these words to describe our honoree. Quote, Janice is an exceptional university citizen, state employee, and ambassador for our system and education as a whole. Unquote. On that note, I am honored to present our first Academic Staff Excellence Award to Janice Meyer of UW Superior. Janice. Thank you so much. I want to start by genuinely thanking the Regents and the Selection Committee for choosing me to be the first ever UW Superior Academic Staff Member to receive this honor. I wish I could be there with you today in person, primarily to personally convey my gratitude, but also because I really wanted to finally get my picture taken with President Thompson, who was my governor while growing up in Wisconsin. Hopefully I can get a rain check with you on that, President Thompson. I'm excited to share with you my perspective of what it takes to become an outstanding academic staff member. For me, it actually takes what it actually takes started long before July 6th of 2009, my official starting date as a UW Superior employee. What it takes is having a commitment to the collective in the state of Wisconsin for all kids, regardless of their circumstances, to actualize their potential. I grew up in Northern Wisconsin in a blue collar working class family who worked very hard, but never seemed to have enough to cover the basics. I can recall days brushing my teeth and getting ready before school in a local gas station because our power and electricity had been shut off. Education first with public K through 12 school and soon with UW Superior was my ticket to a brighter future. The state of Wisconsin leaders investing in public education is what it takes. What it takes is the UW system and all of your commitment to serving the needs of families and communities in all regions of our state. Families and businesses in the North come from more economically disadvantaged situations, and we know the post-secondary attainment rate is lower and the poverty rate is higher for this region. Without systems commitment to the greater good and belief in the potential of everyone in our state, regardless of their situation or upbringing and providing access um, for these first generation, oftentimes college students, I would not be here today. UW Systems continued commitment to high quality, affordable education in all regions of the state of Wisconsin is what it takes. What it takes is a forward thinking leader like Chancellor Renee Wachter, who is committed to finding innovative ways to enhance the vitality of the region and continue the Wisconsin idea. With this commitment, my role has continued to evolve over the years, and now I currently serve in my role within the last year as the Senior Community Engagement and Strategic Partnerships Officer. She has always believed in my ability and in me to help her deliver on the university's important commitments to students hands-on learning, as well as community relations workforce development, and economic and business engagement priorities. Chancellor Wachter's commitment to strategic partnerships is what it takes. What it takes is supportive, dedicated colleagues and team members who give so much to our students and to our region, and for me to have the opportunity to oversee and support the nearly 12,000 hands-on student community-based learning experiences over the last year, it takes, and it wouldn't be possible without the Link Center, my Link Center team, 
the caring, committed, and exceptional colleagues that I have at UWS. Have any incredible student and regionally focused team in campus who cares, that's what it takes. What it takes also is having a strong support system. I would not be here receiving this honor today without the support of my husband, Mike, and my family. There is no way I could have put in the long days, late nights, and, and long weekends, and the heart needed to achieve excellence without his daily support to myself, and as I was away, to our kiddos, Dylan and Madeline, and also my mom who came over without question to help care for them as babies and toddlers when they were sick, and who stepped up throughout the last year with COVID so that I was able to continue working to serve our students in our region. Having an incredible team at home, that's what it takes. And yes, what it also takes is self-motivation and sacrifice. It takes going above and beyond and anticipating needs and saying yes to the extra projects and opportunities. It takes believing in oneself even when others may not and despite others not always understanding or seeing the new way, continuing to persist and persevere, have patience and a positive attitude. It takes having to think outside of the box and be innovative and take risks and be ahead of where everyone else is, turn around and help guide people to see where it is that we can and should go together. It takes drive and believing in something bigger than oneself and a commitment to education. And working for an incredible campus that I love and giving back to a region and a state that has given me so much. For me, that's what it takes. Thank you so much and congratulations to the other award recipients today as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our second academic staff excellence award for 2020 in the individual category goes to Denise Ostinsky, an administrative program manager in the College of Social Sciences and Professional Studies at UW Parkside. Denise develops innovative higher education programs to recruit and support both traditional and working adult students. For example, Denise established a concurrent enrollment program called Parkside Access to College Credit, which enables area high school students to earn both high school and college credit for certain classes. She also attained a $1.4 million grant from the U.S. Department of Education to create a U.S. history and civics program for 100 high school students and 50 teachers, in which high school students earn three college credits and teachers six graduate credits. For working adults, she helped create the Masters of Arts in Applied Professional Studies. This is an applied master's degree that meets the employment needs of many industries. A colleague noted, quote, I cannot, I cannot address all the ways Denise is involved in making our campus better. It would take me all day, but she has been instrumental, if not absolutely essential, to every initiative coming out of the Center for Professional Studies, unquote. It is my distinct honor to present our second 2020 Academic Staff Excellence Award to Denise Ostensky of UW Parkside. Good morning. Thank you, Regent Saffold, for that kind introduction. I'd like to thank the Selection Committee for recognizing my achievements at UW Parkside and selecting me for the 2020 Academic Staff Excellence Award. It's truly an honor to be recognized at the highest level of the UW system for the work that I am so passionate about. Not to downplay the award at all, I am even more grateful and flattered when I read the letters of support that my colleagues wrote on my behalf. It means everything to me that I am respected as a colleague, the work that I am involved in is noticed, and people all across UW Parkside feel that the work I'm engaged in is supporting our university mission and vision. UW Parkside is structured such that we have four colleges. I work in the College of Social Sciences and Professional Studies. 
I see my role as program director as responsible to serve the students who attend UW Parkside because without them, there is no Parkside. I serve students who are considering attending, students who do not think that they can attend, and the student who never even considered college as an option for them. The work that I do each day is fueled with passion and commitment to provide every person that I meet the tools to enhance their future. In my role, I report to our Dean, Peggy James. If you know Peggy James, you know that she is dedicated to student success, student access to higher education, citizenship, and engagement. When combining our passions together, we find ourselves working outside of the traditional box. I wouldn't be where I am today without the leadership, mentoring, and friendship from Peggy. So I've said I enough. It's time to move on to the we. The highlights of my work that have been shared with you through the nomination materials are a result of team efforts. Our small but mighty team can accomplish just about anything. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the core team that I'm talking about. I'm, our team consists of Peggy James, our Dean, Giovanna Gutierrez, an outreach uh, Dean's assistant, Maureen Bacala, my assistant, and myself. Of course, there are lots of other team members depending on the project, and I appreciate them all so much. The people that you surround yourself with are what it takes to be an outstanding academic staff member. Our team challenges each other, supports each other's ideas, sometimes creative, some may say some crazy, often reaching for the stars. We celebrate our successes, and most importantly, in today's world, we trust one another enough to allow mistakes or even dare I say failures in our safe spaces. I must also thank my husband and children. They have supported me throughout my career at UW Parkside. Like Janice just said, many of you your career takes you away from your family in the evenings, the weekends, and with travel to conferences and other meetings several days at a time. I am grateful for the support and encouragement from my family and my colleagues to do what I am so passionate about in serving the Southeastern Wisconsin students, community, and families. Again, thank you so much for this honor. I appreciate being a part of your meeting today since we um, couldn't meet a year ago. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. I'll now call forward Regent Mike Jones for our next award. Thank you, Regent Walsh. Our third Academic Staff Excellence Award for 2020 goes to the UW River Falls We Are Falcons program. The We Are Falcons program began in the summer of 2017 to showcase what it means to be a Falcon and what UW River Falls cares about as a university. Individuals from 10 functional areas formed the We Are Falcons Committee, chaired by the Student Involvement Office staff. To engage students, the committee designed a diverse set of activities and tools. They include student, student video testimonials, an interactive website, and branded communication and giveaway items, including socks designed by the local alum. In addition, the campus promoted the university's values, including focus, academic excellence, inclusiveness, innovation, global engagement, and integrity. The We Are Falcons program also encourages students to participate in high impact practices, such as undergraduate research and international education. 
It also encouraged students to dis discuss the big topics, such as bias, mental health, and preventing sexual assault and hazing. A monthly forum called WeChat allows students to explore their beliefs, perspectives, and biases in an environment that fosters growth and a greater sense of community. In the nomination materials, a colleague described the benefits of the program this way, quote, because of the We Are Falcons program, there is a more robust and visible culture of excitement, inclusion, compassion, and evidence of authentic community here at River Falls. This program has wholeheartedly and boldly cultivated, unquote. It is with great pride that I present the 2020 Academic Staff Excellence Award to the UW River Falls We Are Falcons program, represented today by Elise Peters, Event and Activity Coordinator and Chair of the We Are Falcons Committee. Congratulations. Good morning, everyone. My name is Elise Peters. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the Events and Activities Coordinator at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, and I also have the pleasure of serving as the Chair for the We Are Falcons Committee. First and foremost, I want to say thank you for honoring the amazing work of all academic staff across the state. It's truly an honor to be recognized for programmatic efforts. Um, so everywhere in the world has a mission, vision, and values, from McDonald's to NASA, and most of them live on a website and stay there. And what We Are Falcons has really aimed to do is to provide life and showcase to our students on the forefront, what did they sign up for? They, they're coming to be a Falcon, but what does it actually mean? We want them to be able to see our campus values and the people they meet, the classes they take, the programs they attend, and the spaces they frequent. And so that's kind of what we sought out to do when we started the We Are Falcons campaign. We also know that we want our students to hold us accountable, and they only can do that if they actually know what those values are. And we, too, want to know what our students value. We know they all come from many places and have multiple journeys that brought them to be a Falcon. And so we hope that they can infuse our campus community by seeing their own values represented in our own. I'm going to kind of take you through a typical day of like, how do we introduce this to our new students? And so usually you will be with me. You'll see me. There's a lot of food, flair, fun, candy. We can't bring that to you today. I am hoping to bring that to you virtually. But the first question I ask all of our first year students on their, their day of new student registration is, who are you and what do you value? I'm going to ask that to you right now, and I want you to think about what is one identity you have and something you value. I then challenge these first year students on their first day here on campus to turn to a stranger and to share it with someone. Now, you lucked out because we're virtual, but if we were live, I would have us all do this. But it's so powerful because students, again, they see, feel seen. They see themselves as a Falcon. They learn about the values we have, and they get to share with someone who's also a Falcon. So that's just a kind of a little snapshot. I now I could talk about this for a long time, but I want to give some some highlights because we have done so much in the last four years and throughout this last year, even with COVID, there's just been so much um, that this program has really and instilled and continued to to grow on our campus. Um, so first and foremost, this program has and always will be a co curricular collaboration. It truly is the most the, it's the best form of collaboration I have seen and I'm. It's such an honor to be able to work with colleagues who can infuse um, this this concept within the programs they provide, the classes they do, and all that sort of thing. It's truly created a culture shift. Um, we went into classrooms and facilitated values activities with hundreds of students at this point. During COVID, we created a virtual course where we tried to create space for students to be able to connect with campus values, to learn about the things we care about and connect with one another. We've created a brand. Our office in We Are Falcons is known for some giveaways. You'll see posters, pins, t-shirts, water bottles. We want students to know that when they are here, they are a Falcon and they're all a part of that community. Um, and it really has created a unifying call. When you come to campus, which I hope you do, you will see these red posters everywhere. Um, we've created education. So during the election campaign, we created an offshoot called We Are Falcons and We Vote, which we had students educate students. It was all virtual through social media uh, around voting. How can I use my values to vote? What does it mean to be an absentee ballot? And 69% of our student population shared that they um, they had a positive experience and they learned something because of our education efforts. We created a living, speaking, breathing value series, and this is kind of the cornerstone of We Are Falcons, where we have one value word once a month, we bring a speaker, and we tie a custom giveaway item to that event, and students learn about what does it mean, what does academic 
excellence actually mean? Um, what is inclusivity? How can I experience global engagement? Um, during COVID, that, that didn't stop. It actually continued and we had a full virtual series where we focused on our value word of inclusivity and more crucially race and anti-racism. We surveyed our participants this year and 98% of them shared that attending a We Are Falcons value series event allowed them to, make them to explore perspectives that were different than their own. I'm just going to share two little comments from students because we, we also asked them what they thought about the series and these were two of the things. One, I really enjoyed that there was a prize. We all know incentives work and this not it's true with this program as well. It made me go to an event I would not normally go to and I was able to learn something I didn't know I needed. Also, I think it was very refreshing to see our campus take action and show support for different cultures with amazing speakers that educated us. We need more of this. So again, I could talk a lot, but I'm going to stop here and I'm going to leave you with something from our very first video. We've created a lot of videos with We Are Falcons, but this statement rings true with what the essence of the program is. We all have a story. We come from many places, have multiple perspectives, and value different things. This makes us who we are. Regardless of what your story is, it brought you here. Thank you for letting me share the We Are Falcons story. Thank you. Thank you. We move on now to the 2021 Regents Academic Staff Excellence Awards. As I said before, I really need to acknowledge the extraordinary demands that were placed on our nominees this past year. The pandemic required a quick pivot to support public health and safety while also supporting remote teaching and learning. Clearly, they were up to the challenge. Before we present this year's award recipients, I would like to acknowledge the other nominees who did such extraordinary work by reading their names and in institutions. Individual nominees included Nicole Kurth, UW Green Bay, Dr. Abigail Deo, UW La Crosse, Lee Malik, UW Milwaukee, Kathleen Wagner, UW Platteville, Leanne Van Allen, UW River Falls, Anne Rogulski, UW Stevens Point, Harry Anderson, UW Superior, and Dr. Terry DeWalt, UW Whitewater. The program nominees included UW Green Bay's Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning, UW Madison's Teach Online at UW, and the UW River Falls Office of Sustainability. On behalf of our committee and all the regions, I want to thank the nominees for taking the time to submit materials and for their important, crucial contributions. My colleagues on the Regent Selection Committee will now introduce one of the three 2021 award recipients. Presenting our first award, Regent Mike Jones. I thank you, Regent Walsh. I think I'm going to get my 10,000 steps in today. It is my privilege to present the first 2021 Board of Regents Academic Staff Excellence Award in the individual category to Dr. Malia Jones, an associate scientist in UW-Madison Applied Population Laboratory for the past six years. Dr. Jones studies infectious disease epidemiology, herd immunity, and spatial variation in vaccine coverage, topics that are quite relevant today. Her scientific expertise and outreach talents, combined with her interest in the complex relationship between geography and human health, helped her support an informed public response to questions result resulting from the COVID-19 global health pandemic. Malia is project co-founder, editor-in-chief, and a contributing writer in an interdisciplinary team of women called Dear Pandemic which uses its significant social media presence to help members of the public face the pandemic with curated, scientific, and practical information. In 2018, Dr. Jones was awarded a five-year, $500,000 grant through a Mentored Research Scientist Career Development Award from the National Institute for Allergies and Infectious Disease. This grant is helping support her research into how clusters of people who decline vaccines can affect herd immunity and how misinformation about vaccines and infectious disease spread on social networks. 
No surprise, Dr. Jones has been a guest on national television. Her statements and interviews on COVID-19 have appeared in major news outlets, outlets, including NBC News, The New York Times, and USA Today. A colleague commented on many benefits of working with our honoree. Quote, Dr. Jones's colleague within our unit eagerly look forward to opportunities to work with her and her external collaborators span, spanning the campus seek her out for her valuable insight and thoughtful mentoring. I am honored to present our first 2021 Academic Staff Excellence Award to Dr. Malia Jones. Congratulations. Thank you. Early on the morning of March 5th, 2020, I woke up and wrote an email to my friends and family responding to the previous day's news from the CDC. They had just updated guidance on the emerging global health crisis. Specifically, CDC revised their guidance on who could be tested for COVID-19 in the United States, expanding the case criteria to include anyone with symptoms, not just those who had recently visited a few selected outbreak areas. This was a tacit sign from the CDC that the pandemic had reached the United States and was spreading in our communities. It was a scary and uncertain time. When I wrote that email, I genuinely had no idea where it would lead. It contained some practical advice about what was coming next, grounded in my experience studying the spread of infectious diseases. Some of it turned out with the clarity of hindsight to be wrong, and some of it turned out to be very good advice. For example, about social distancing. Remember when you had never heard that term before? At the time, we knew so little about COVID-19 and what was coming. There was a complete vacuum of information and that email got sucked into it and amplified. There was a moment over the week that followed when I faced a choice. I could decide to stay engaged in the public eye, trying to help, or I could retreat to the relative calm of my usual work and spend my pandemic time in obscurity producing papers and grant proposals. I decided to stay in. Over the last 16 months, I've endeavored to apply my unique skills to a global crisis that has threatened everything we value. It has threatened our lives and our livelihoods. Launching a science communication platform in a health crisis was never a career goal for me and not something I was trained to do. I simply saw the need and did what I could to fill it. This has been very hard work. It has been fulfilling to feel that I have a contribution to make, but it has also been the most humbling and challenging professional moment of my life. I, am, I know I'm not the only person who has had a challenging year. All of this year's nominees, indeed, I think everyone in the state of Wisconsin and perhaps uh, all around the world has made crucial contributions to where we have landed today. I know I'm not alone in this. I find it somewhat awkward to receive an individual award for something that was so much a team effort. I owe a debt of gratitude to Catherine Curtis, David Long, James Conway, and Marcy Carlson for their nomination and ongoing support of this work. Thank you to the entire Applied Population Laboratory staff and the Department of Community and Environmental Sociology for making space for this important work. And to the Holt Center for a small grant that's allowed us to translate much of our important work on Dear Pandemic into Spanish. Thank you also to the private donations uh, from our readers that have paid for Dear Pandemic's web hosting and Slack fees. I must also thank all the other contributors at Dear Pandemic, which is a volunteer team effort. Thank you, especially to my co-founders, Allison Buttenheim, Jennifer Dowd, Lindsay Leininger, and my collaborators, Aparna Kumar, Ashley Ritter, Gretchen Peterson, Lauren Hale, Mary Jo Valentino, Sandra Albrecht, Sarah Coles, and Shoshi Aronowitz. And thank you to our wonderful team of other volunteers. I want to especially highlight the roles of two other Dear Pandemic contributors from the University of Wisconsin in this work. First, Dr. Amanda Simonek is an associate professor at the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee's Zilber School of Public Health. She's been a core member of the team since the very beginning, and her commitment to social justice and expertise in infectious disease epidemiology has been invaluable. And also Dr. Christine Whelan, cl clinical professor in UW-Madison School of Human Ecology, whose expertise in social systems and happiness have turned out to be just what we needed in this latest phase of the pandemic as we try to negotiate it coming to an end. 
Thank you also to my husband, Noah, who has been a steadfast source of support through it all. He has been there as I have fallen apart, yelled, cried, whooped with joy and shouted in frustration. Thank you for being there. Thank you also to my kids, Owen and Desmond, having a mom who is also a famous infectious disease epidemiologist during a pandemic has taken up a lot of space in our lives. This past year, I have so often chosen to do something besides spend my spare time with them, and they've been more selfless and supportive and understanding about this than anyone could or probably should ask of a 10 and a six year old. I promise to start taking two day weekends again, starting tomorrow. And thank you to my network of friends and extended family, especially here in Madison, who have baked cakes, gone on walks, thrown socially distanced outdoor birthday parties in February, rose to the occasion to make COVID safe Halloween happen in my neighborhood and left cold beers on my doorstep. Last, but certainly not least, I sincerely appreciate the recognition of the Board of Regents. Your recognition is an important signal, not only to me, but to higher learning broadly. It says that the role of scientists is not just to produce knowledge, but to communicate it and apply it in practical terms to improve the human condition. This is the basis of my field, public health. This is also the Wisconsin idea, and I want to thank the award selection committee for your continued commitment to this founding principle of our institution. It's a powerful idea. I believe it can change the world. This award highlights the potential and appropriateness of scientists engaging in public discourse about science. It cannot be overstated how important it is for scientists to engage directly in today's information environment. And in order to do that, our contributions must be valued by our institutions. So thank you for recognizing this work. Our second 2021 Academic Staff Excellence Award in the individual category goes to Kimberly Langoff, Director of Risk and Sponsored Programs at UW Oshkosh. Ms. Langoff has been an academic staff member at UW Oshkosh for more than a decade. During that time, she has consistently played an important role in helping students, faculty, and staff achieve success. After earning undergraduate and graduate degrees from UW Oshkosh in biology and microbiology, respectively, she joined the staff at her alma mater as part of its Environmental Research and Innovation Center, known as ERIC. There, she conducted research on beach restoration on the Great Lakes and was later promoted to ERIC lab manager. This past year, during the pandemic, Ms. Langoff became the core architect of the university's COVID-19 testing program. She served as one of the primary points of contact with critical stakeholders, including the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Wisconsin Department of Public Health, and several local health organizations. Kimberly served as an important source of information for the CDC, which piloted its research studies on COVID antigen testing through a coordinated effort with UW Oshkosh. In fact, she was even recognized by former Surgeon General Jerome Adams for the university's proactive COVID-19 response. The Oshkosh Northwestern newspaper selected her as a 2020 Oshkosh Person of the Year for outstanding impact on the community. UW Oshkosh Provost John Coker said this of our honoree, quote, Kim's remarkable service to the institution, the UW system, and the state of Wisconsin through the COVID-19 pandemic has been nothing short of groundbreaking, unquote. It is my honor to present our second 2021 Academic Staff Excellence Award to Kimberly Langoff of UW Oshkosh. Kimberly. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. And thank you to the Board of Regents Selection Committee, UW System President Tommy Thompson, 
UW Oshkosh Chancellor Levitt for acknowledging me here today and to UWO Provost John Coker for nominating me for this award. As a scientist early in my career, I knew the information I had learned last year to communicate what I learned my old. As my career progresses, that ability to communicate remains central to the success of my teams and my proclivity for special projects. I do not need to say this, but clearly this last year has been challenging for all of us in ways that we have never imagined. I had the opportunity to, to lead and communicate many aspects of UWO's COVID response, especially around testing and vaccinations. In the beginning of the pandemic, there was so much fear and uncertainty, and it was our job to use science and common sense to bring us back together. We had to communicate concise, accurate, and ever-changing, scientifically sound information, while understanding there was rightfully fear and anxiety that we would need to meet head-on. As one of the primary communicators, I needed to ensure our community felt confident that we had their best interest at heart, and would keep their safety as our number one priority. And I am grateful to say that we achieved that trust. As the pandemic progressed, we, meaning higher ed administrators with really no clinical experience, uh, needed to accomplish the impossible and create a COVID-19 mitigation plan to bring back thousands of students and staff, which needed mass testing with no way to get tests, PPE, and the medical integrity to even build this. UW system began etching away at this impossible task with securing hundreds of thousands of rapid tests, which laid the groundwork. We could have, we could not have done this without them and our clinical partners, Dr. Ashok Rai and Amber Allen from Purveya Health. They define the true meaning of partnership and didn't hesitate to help us in the most altruistic ways. I don't think we will ever be able to truly repay their kindness and contribution to UW Oshkosh. We also needed leaders to trust our boots on the ground emergency operation committee to take calculated risks in a time of extreme uncertainty. I would like to thank Chancellor Levitt, Provost Kogler, and Provost and Vice Chancellor Roberts and the rest of our cabinet for their tremendous leadership, which made UWO recognized by the former Surgeon General, the Center for Disease Control and Health and Human Services as a model for in mitigating COVID-19 on college campuses. I must also recognize our chief of police, Kurt Leibold, who led our COVID-19 response and emergency operation committee with conviction, determination, and understanding. His experience and partnership has given longevity and direction through this pandemic and the confidence that together we could bring our students back and see them succeed. My colleagues in the EOC, the Culver Family Welcome Center, AKA Vaccine Center Testing Center, uh, new clinical staff and my departmental teams are the most dedicated and talented people I have ever had the opportunity to work with. They have shown enormous grit, resilience, and integrity when it would have been so much easier to walk away. Without this army of people, this recognition would not be possible. It took everyone to create our success, our faculty, our staff, and most importantly, our students buying into our model. Finally, I cannot end without my deepest gratitude to my family, especially my husband, Brian, and my three children. They give me so much grace to do my work, which led into late evenings on my computer, uh, weekend meetings, problem solving between homeschooling and family dinners. And at times, the occasional swear word when the CDC would release new guidance, which was different than what we communicated that morning. Uh, and my three-year-old would say, mama, don't say that, or even worse, repeat what I said. They are all my center and they keep me going. I am honored and humbled to be with you today accepting this prestigious award. I look forward to my next challenge at UWO, as long as it is not another global pandemic. Uh, and I am proud today to say that I am a Titan. Thank you very much. Our third 2021 award today goes to an outstanding academic program. That honor goes to Project Success of UW Oshkosh, directed by Jamie Reichenberger. 
Founded in 1979, Project Success supports hundreds of diverse students at UW Oshkosh each year. It is one of the few university programs in the country to use a phonics-based multi-sensory method in improving reading, spelling, and writing. The program also provides developmental mathematics instruction and tutoring. Staff encourage academic success using evidence-based individualized support informed by best practices for students with learning disabilities. Members of this population on average enter four-year institutions at half the rate of their peers without learning disabilities. Project success not only helps to increase enrollment for these students, but it also helps them persist and succeed. In the 2019 academic year, more than 220 unique students used at least one exam accommodation through Project Success in more than 280 distinct courses. About 225 UW Oshkosh instructors taught a course in which at least one exam accommodation was requested. The shift to online instruction during the pandemic encouraged Project Success staff to collaborate with information technology services. As a result, course instructors receive technical support to ensure their students' ac academic accommodations continue to be met. A Project Success alumnus offered this testimonial, quote, I beat the odds as, in black, as a black male with dys dyslexia in special education. For all of my UW experiences, I am forever thankful for those that paved the way before me, and now it is my turn to reach back and pull others through. I'll read that again, quote, I beat the odds as a black male with dyslexia in special education. For all of my UWO experiences, I am forever thankful for those that paved the way before me, and now it is my turn to reach back and pull others through, unquote. It is with great pride that I present this year's Academic Staff Excellence Program Award to UW Oshkosh's Project Success, represented today by Director Jamie Reichenberger. Congratulations. Thank you, and great job pronouncing my last name. Um, on behalf of the entire staff of Project Success, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to the Dean Haling, Provost Coker, Chancellor Levitt, and the many other UW Oshkosh administrators who continue to support and value the mission of our program. Thank you to the Board of Regents and UW System President Thompson for the recognition and honor of receiving the Regents Academic Staff Excellence Award this year. When our staff members first met earlier this year to discuss our application materials, a few points stood out to me related to outstanding achievement. First, not one of our staff members saw their daily work and responsibilities as a job. Each person in our office has a passion for the work that they do. This passion revolves around our students, often advocating for inclusion and access to services and support for a population of students that are often misunderstood and underestimated. Second, we all realize that we can do the same tasks every year, but every day is a brand new experience. The impacts of the pandemic, although difficult at times, brought out a lot of new opportunities for our staff members. These opportunities were to support both students and faculty and staff on campus in a new way. Here are just a few ways that Project Success staff members enhanced their support this past year. Lacey Beeman and Bill Kitts seamlessly adapted the walk-in student referral process to continue to support struggling students on our campuses. Ashley Lewandowski reimagined the traditional recruitment meetings to provide a meaningful virtual experience for students and their families. Sherry Needens and Michael Flanagan enhanced their structured content support to meet the needs of our online learners, all while leading with positivity and optimism. Megan Weichel was the bridge for sharing information between students, staff, and faculty all while, all while maintaining opportunities for our student employees to continue to work and contribute to the project success mission. Our staff is a tight knit team. We try to use our strengths to support each other. I am humbled to have the opportunity to work each day with the outstanding individuals in our office. 
We realize that there is always room to grow and learn, especially from our most difficult experiences. We are excited for the many new experiences and opportunities that fall 2021 is sure to bring. Thank you again for choosing Project Success as the Regents Academic Staff Excellence Award recipient for 2021. Uh, I'm sure Chancellor Levitt's very proud that Oshkosh essentially hit a double this year. Um, so thank you very much um, to all of the nominees, to all the folks who worked for those nominations, and thank you to the winners for the privilege of talking about your work today and sharing it with the world. We look forward next year to giving these awards in person. Regent President Peterson, that concludes the awards. Thank you, Regent Walsh, and thank you for your leadership and everybody who's participated on the committee. What a remarkable group. Hearing their stories is always inspiring. As a point of personal privilege, uh, one of the academic stack excellence winners from 2020, Denise Olstinski, and I attended undergraduate studies together. She was a leader then, just as she is now for Chancellor Ford at UW Parkside. With that, uh, congratulations to all the award winners. I believe President Thompson would like to say a few words. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> President uh, Drew. Um, it goes without saying that the academic staff we have in our institutions are outstanding. They're truly the backbone of our universities. And every time I go to visit a university, which is quite frequently, I am amazed by their dedication, their passion and compassion, and their belief in their students. And so it's really an honor for me to say thank you to all of you that have won these awards, both in 2020 and those in 2021. You exemplify the best in education. You exemplify the best as being employees of this great institution. We thank you from the bottom of my heart and wish you nothing but the best in the future. And know that the Board of Regents and uh, myself and staff at UW institutions are all in favor of you and we'll do everything we possibly can uh, to make things easier for you and better. Congratulations, one and all, and thank you very much. And once again, I do have to make an exception for that one individual from Superior who had a shout out to me as governor. So she's, she definitely is a triple A student. We will generate a photo opportunity for our Academic Staff Excellence Award winner from UW Superior. Let's give them all one more round of applause. At this time, we'd like to officially recognize the service, commitment, and contributions of one of our colleagues whose term on the board has ended. Regent Emeritus Eve Hall. I'd like to invite Regent Tracy Klein to present the board's resolution of appreciation for Dr. Hall's service to the UW system. We also have a special guest today, a former colleague who has returned to us to join us in recognition of Eve. Welcome Regent Emeritus Mike Falbo. With that, Regent Klein, the floor is yours. President Falbo, please join me at, at the podium. I think I, I speak for Mike and myself. We, you know, it's our extreme honor to be here to recognize Eve. And I'm yes. going to let. Uh, I'm going first. Yes, please. Oh. Whoops, these are from 2007. Wrong one. I haven't worn this jacket in a while. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go. Good morning to everybody. Uh, and I, I had a list of. People I was going to say good morning to, but most of them aren't here. So <laughs> I will say good morning to the Board of Regents, the chancellors, the staff that's here, uh, and University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, the host. This, uh, this is where I sat in on my first meeting as a regent in uh, 2004. It's always an honor and a privilege to come before this group that's responsible to lead what I think is the best university system in the country. I know you may not hear that often as you deal with all the hurdles and challenges that come before you, but if you travel a country, you will hear that quite often if you're talking about higher education. It is the people at this table 
that maintains, guides, and continues the efforts towards excellence that keep that reputation alive and well. Thank you for all you do. The chancellors have always been my special group. Um, I would always tease them that they're the most progressive group I have ever worked with, as long as it doesn't involve change. That is a joke. <laughs> they are the instrument and facilitators of change that shape the future. Now, Eve Hall, years ago, we met when a former governor who's sitting in this room appointed me to chair the Milwaukee County, Milwaukee County Child Welfare Council. That's when the state took control of child welfare services from Milwaukee County. Needless to say, that was not a popular position, but that's when I met Eve. And Eve might tell you that, that I may have been her mentor for some years. In those early days, and she may not know this, she was my mentor in a position that I didn't know enough about, didn't quite appreciate all the ins and outs of such a bold undertaking. She guided me through those days. I will always be grateful for that. She taught me the importance of the Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund as we literally walked the streets of Milwaukee, knocking on doors of CEOs to get funding to provide important educational opportunities to students at historically black colleges and universities. Now as CEO of the Milwaukee Urban League and as a region emeritus, her commitment to education and opportunity does not stop. He will continue her passion for education, her drive to make the educational experience better for all students she is and will continue to be a powerful advocate for equality, diversity, and inclusion. Why? It's a family tradition. As Eve moves forward and this body moves forward, we all work to the future. And I think some of the things that I've learned over the years from the people at this table, and the, especially the people back there, and from Eve Hall, is that the future is not a result of choices among alternative paths offered. It is a place that is created, created first in mind and will, created next in activity. The future is not some place we are going to, but one we are creating. The path to it are not found, they are made, and the activity of making them changes both the maker and the destination. Eve, Sheila and I can't wait to see what's next. We will be with you every step of the way. We respect all that you do for the community and, we, and for your friendship. Yes, Eve, one more thing. The Board of Regents is a seven-year term. She claims I held back that piece of the job description seven short years ago. So I thank you for allowing me to be part of Eve's celebration and, and keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for being here today. Um, and I'm honored to, to uh, be here to recognize my good friend, Dr. Eve Hall. A friend told me when I joined the Board of Regents, uh, I was kind of asking for advice and they said two things, ask a few good questions, try to do that, and find a friend. And so I found Eve. And Mike was her mentor and Eve was mine. I've always believed in leadership ladders where people before you pave the way for the people that are be behind you and you, you give the hand up. Eve was my person on the Board of Regents, taking the time to debrief with me after hard board meetings or tell me, you know, what was going on or how could we be uh, impactful for good. And um, so I, I appreciated all that. And um, for two or three years, I served as her chair, co-chair on the ready committee. So she was the chair and I was the co-chair and she was my role model in chairing a regent committee. Although I think she was able to keep within the time frames, <laughs> as I am not all the time, but very impactful meetings. And she made sure um, that voices were heard. More than that, though, I would say I learned so much from her personally, uh, the dignity and care she shows in each and every interaction with each of us her thoughtful comments, her gentle pres presence, her easy smile, taking care to be part of the team, but also to make 
to ensure others are part of the team. Um, and what I mean by that is making sure all people are seen, all voices are heard, and that people are welcomed in this diverse mosaic that is the University of Wisconsin system. So as one of our award winners, and by the way, they're very impressive, uh, one of our academic staff award winner, winners said today, who are you? What do you value? What is your perspective? So important for all of us as we come together and work on behalf of the state of Wisconsin and the University of Wisconsin system. I just would note, Eve served the full seven years, uh, body, mind, spirit involved and engaged. And, you know, I think, you know, some, some have left us, you know, some say, hey, this is a hard job. You know, we have other professional pursuits. Eve stayed on and was totally engaged. And I think she knew that we needed her voice. And for many years, she served as the only black American on the Board of Regents. And I valued her perspective um, so much. And when she became the head of the, um, the Milwaukee Urban League, it was a big mantle. And she has a very complicated job and has to lead that organization and that community. So as part of that, I was honored to meet her mother. And her mother is almost 90 years old. She's a retired MPS teacher. Um, she kept tutoring kids until the COVID, start of COVID to give you a sense of the devotion to education in this family. And Eve is the most devoted daughter. So um, a lesson in kindness and responsibility. I would, I would call her and she'd say, hey, I'm taking my mom to get her hair done. Take my mom to do this or that. And she's always on the phone. I felt like sometimes the three of us were talking. <laughs> <as> we, <laughs> but she always had time for me. But she was so, she's so devoted to her mom. And so I am in awe of the person who is Dr. Eve Hall. Um, and so, my friend, I will, I will miss you. I will miss our dinners and our conversations. Um, and we will all miss your thoughtful comments and your good judgment. And I, we looked for the, the sunglass picture of you, but, but we, uh, Chancellor Schmidt found this one from, from that same event, even in Eau Claire. And um, I just want to say she made my service on the Board of Regents um, so full and so important. So I will read the resolution. Whereas Dr. Eve Hall has dedicated seven exemplary years of service as region of the University of Wisconsin system from 2014 to 2021, whereas a voice for inclusion, Eve was the co-chair of the UW system task force on campus climate from 2016 through 2017. And that was an effort launched to ensure that UW system addresses climate concerns for all marginalized students and employees. Whereas Eve served on the Personnel Matters Review Committee, the Wisconsin Technical College System Board, the inaugural Regents Opportunity Scholarship Committee, which was a new initiative announced in 2020 to provide $10,000 um, scholarships to underrepresented, underserved students who had overcome adversity and exhibited financial need and, and merit. Whereas Eve was a member of the special regent committees for the chancellor searches for UW-Milwaukee in 2014 and UW-Stevens Point in 2020. Whereas Eve served seven years on the ready committee, including two and a half years as chair, one and a half years as vice chair, four years on business and finance committee, uh, finance committee three years on the education committee. Whereas Eve has worked to reward the commitment of extraordinary UW education uh, educators serving on all three regent award committees, excellence, uh, teaching excellence, academic staff excellence, diversity, and in all ways has been a staunch and articulate advocate for advancing excellence, affordability, and accessibility within the UW system. Whereas Eve has been a enthusiastic supporter of higher education throughout her career, previously serving as the Chief Innovation Officer for the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, where she spent 10 years in national leadership roles impacting students as well as university school district partnerships across several states. Whereas Eve is a, a proud alumna of University of Wisconsin system, specifically UWM, earning her Master of Science in Administrative Leadership from UW-Milwaukee, um, before earning her doctorate in educational leadership at Cardinal Stritch University. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System commends Dr. Eve Hall for her dedicated and distinguished service on behalf of higher education in the state of Wisconsin. Thank you, Eve.
you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's my turn to be up here. I'm used to sitting out there watching other people. Um, first of all, thank you, Mike and Sheila, for being here. I would not have been maybe considered for the Board of Regents if it had not been for Mike Falbo. So your words, Mike, mean a lot to me, and especially your trust in me coming on the board to do the right thing. And it's interesting because one of my first experiences was for the search and decision on our great chancellor, Mark Money. And so I was right here. And plus, this is my alma mater. So it is with honor that I stand here. And then to you, Tracy, who became my friend, um, you know, the times, and please, everybody, relish the time that you're on the Board of Regents. Seven years goes by quickly. And no, Mike did not tell me it was seven years until after I said yes. And so, because I was like, God, that's almost a decade of my life. But anyway, but it goes by quickly. But you learn so much from each other. So please take time to learn from each other. I learned just as much from Tracy as she did from me. So please do not diminish what I learned from you. And from each of you, we've, I think we've all had our conversations about issues. Um, and I just, I took my role seriously and I want you to do the same. I'm depending on this Board of Regents to continue to do the work. And even though I'm not in a formal position, I am still here with you because education is key. My core is real simple. It's around equity, diversity, and interdependence. Because guess what? We're an interdependent society. We cannot run from each other. And when one wins, we all win. We don't have to love each other, but we can respect each other and know that we all have something to contribute in this world. To the leadership, first of all, my former boss, Tommy Thompson, this is crazy, right? We are joined at the hip again, right? <laughs> and I was very excited to hear about you taking over at the helm. And your energy, your commitment is what's needed in this, in this Board of Regents and in our state. Um, I came behind and was with Mike, who was phenomenal in setting the stage. Drew, you're doing a great job as president. Mike, you are as well. Jess, thank you for your support. And our attorney, we're always there laughing and having some kind of a joke to share. But just everybody, we're in crazy times. And I would encourage you to put politics aside and understand that this is a human issue that we're dealing with right now. We have to make sure that our leadership of all of our universities, and I salute you, chancellors, you do a phenomenal job. You carry the weight of the state. And a lot of times you go underappreciated. But I relished the, t excuse me, the time that I had a chance to meet you, to visit your campuses, and to just understand the personal commitments that you each made, no matter what. Because you set the tone on those campuses. And the Board of Regents is here to support you. At the end of the day, though, we are all responsible for making sure that every student that comes on our campus is welcome, respected, embraced, given a chance for academic success, and that they feel a part of every aspect of the university. That is our responsibility. And when it's not happening, we have to look ourselves in the face to say, what are we doing wrong? Not what are they doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? So this is not the time to sit back. It is the time to embark on the serious conversations because this is not an easy time. And guess what? When it gets hard, don't leave the table. Stay there until you figure out how to make things better. Again, that's our role and responsibility. I will always remember my days on the Regents. It was a beautiful experience. And I hope that I was able to make a difference, chancellors, that you felt supported. And to my colleagues, thank you for your love 
your support in emails and text messages over and beyond our meetings. Greatly appreciate it. I salute you and thank you again. Mike and I had a parking lot joke because we always saw each other in the parking lot at every meeting, no matter what city, right? That was crazy. I made a bunch of Eve, um, I'll be, I'm gonna give you this uh, citation, but I gotta tell one story. Okay. When I was governor, <clears throat> we had serious problems as we still do today, as Eve so poignantly pointed out. And I wanted to do something unique for Milwaukee because I was sick and tired of building prisons. And so I wanted to improve the education and the opportunities for people in Milwaukee to get a good education and get an opportunity. And I came down to meet with a lot of the education officials because I wanted to set up a new office, a governor's office in Milwaukee in order to know that the governor from Madison was the governor for all the state and wanted to make sure that people of color had a good opportunity. And I went to the superintendent, I went to us, some other people and said, I need an outstanding teacher. The rejoinder was, we don't have any Republican teachers. I said, I don't want a Republican, I want the best. And they came to me and said, the best, most passionate, and the leader is Eve Hall. And we set up the governor's office and Eve Hall settled with distinction and helped me out so much. And I'll never forget that. And your leadership qualities, your educational ability, the way you articulate is one of the finest. I love you dearly. You've been a friend forever and you always will be. Congratulations again, Dr. Hall. This meeting will also be the last for another one of our colleagues, Regent Carolyn Stanford-Taylor. 
whose term as superintendent of schools and public instruction will be ending soon. I'd like to invite Karen Walsh to present the board's resolution of appreciation for Regent Stanford Taylor's service to the UW system. Regent Walsh. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. I suspect you're all feeling like you're in the movie Groundhog Day seeing me up here. I, all I need is uh, Sonny and Cher uh, to accompany me. I, I was so honored to be asked to do this. Um, in thinking about Carolyn, go back two years to when Tony Evers was elected our governor. Many things had to happen after that election. And one of them was he had to ask a colleague of his a very important and difficult question. Will you step in to the Department of Public Instruction and lead this agency? And I've got to believe she thought about it a lot. <laughs> and so grateful that she said yes. It's amazing that she did, considering that along with that responsibility came this one. Uh, and that is daunting um, when you think about it, to lead an agency with the importance and the size of DPI, and to come here and hold our feet to the fire regarding our relationship with K through 12 education and why we should never forget that we have to extend our hand and our help to that group. I was very impressed that Carolyn Stanford Taylor was a teacher for 20 years. She saw another opportunity to make an impact on public education. And even though she left teaching, I, I suspect that teaching never left her. And the impact that she has had on public education in Wisconsin, it really cannot be overstated. As a regent, she was so dedicated. Anybody who sat in a committee meeting with Carolyn knew that when she raised her hand, the question was going to be well thought out and challenging. Um, she, she contributed in so many ways, not only search committees, all the things that regents do in the middle of leading an agency the size of DPI. Um, I just think it's been an extraordinary thing to have her here among us and give us her point of view on how we can be better partners and better leaders to open more opportunities for K through 12 students in Wisconsin to look forward to this university system and say, you know, I think I can do that and I'm prepared to do that. So it's my pleasure and privilege to read this resolution in honor of our distinguished colleague, Carolyn Stanford Taylor. Whereas Regent Carolyn Stanford Taylor has served as the 28th State Superintendent of Public Instruction and an ex officio Regent of the University of Wisconsin system from 2019 to 2021. And whereas Carolyn is the first African American State Superintendent in Wisconsin history. And as Wisconsin's Chief State School Officer and leader of the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, She's advanced educational equity and has been committed to building on the vision of every child, a graduate, college and career ready. Whereas Carolyn served as a member of the UW System Task Force for Advancing Teachers and Teacher Education, which this past February offered two potential solutions for meeting Wisconsin's great workforce demand for teachers and school leaders through paid stipends and expanding student loan forgiveness. Whereas as a member of the Special Chancellor Search Committee for UW Stout, Carolyn helped select an energetic new leader for the Blue Devils, who also made university history as the first female chancellor for Wisconsin's Polytechnic University. Whereas Carolyn served on the Education Committee, the Capital Planning and Budget Committee, including one year as Vice Chair, and on the Teaching Excellence Awards Committee, where she was proud to recognize exceptional teachers throughout the UW system and celebrate their impact on students' lives. Whereas Carolyn is a proud alumna of UW-Madison, where she earned her bachelor's degree in elementary education and her master's degree from the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy Analysis. Whereas Carolyn has almost four decades of public education experience, including her prior 17 years as the Assistant State Superintendent for the Division of Learning Support 
and 20 years as a classroom teacher and principal in the Madison Metropolitan School District. And she's been dedicated to the education of our next generation to ensure all children have an opportunity to access a quality education. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Regents of the University of Wisconsin System hereby offers thanks and commendation to Carolyn Stanford Taylor for her many life achievements, her outstanding support of students of all ages, and her exceptional service to the citizens of Wisconsin. We, the students of Wisconsin, and this board will miss you. Good morning and thank you, Regent Walsh. You did a beautiful job. Thank you so much. President Thompson, Regent President Peterson, chancellors and fellow regents, I thank you. It has been an honor to serve on this Board of Regents for the last two and a half years. This, as was mentioned, is my last official meeting. I, I've said that I've been going around doing a series of lasts, but this is the last because this is retirement for me. We have a new superintendent elect, but after 41 years in education, I'm stepping aside. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna be far from the work because I am committed to the pursuit of equity and opportunity and access for all of the students in Wisconsin and their families. So I have just been deeply honored to be here with all of you individuals who are a part of this Board of Regents. So I've been asked many times, what are you going to do in retirement? And my quick response was always, I'm going to try to be successful at retirement, unlike many of my friends and colleagues. But I know that's not true. I know that my calling, my passion is education, and so I will never be far away from that. We know that the last 15 months have challenged us in ways that we couldn't have imagined from the pandemic and it's aftermath that we'll feel for some time. We don't know. We've talked about mental health, the social isolation that our students have experienced and we as adults have experienced and all of those things. We've come through this whole call for social and racial justice. We're still working our way through that. But I think in all of this, we have found some opportunities. And we've heard that mentioned over this last two days, the opportunities that have come from the new learnings through this pandemic. So I say to those members who are new to this board, I know that you accepted this responsibility, hoping to make a difference in the lives of the citizens of the state of Wisconsin. So as we have pivoted to adjust to all the things that have been thrown at us in the last few months, I, I would ask that we think about in that spirit of collaboration, how we can connect our pre-K 12 with higher education. We have some suggestions. I think we can look at teacher education in the workforce, academic and career planning, dual enrollment, creating co-curricular courses to replace the remedial courses, because we've talked about how do we ease the burden on our families and our students. And so we've made some headways in some of those areas. And of course, I've just named a few areas that we could talk about. 
But I do believe that building on these opportunities will move us closer to a seamless pre-K 20 system. The pieces are there. We just need to connect them. So I wanna leave with my appreciation for having been a part of this board. I appreciate the diversity of thought and perspectives that you've demonstrated at our meetings. We can agree to disagree, but we know that all of our hearts are in the right places when we have these discussions. Marion Wright Edelman has been credited along with others for this phrase of service is the rent we pay for our space on earth. I have felt that my voice has been heard, my experience and my perspective have been valued as a member of this board. So I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Carolyn, thank you again for your kind words, your service. We're thrilled to be associated with you. All right, moving on to item 12, it's time to adopt next year's calendar for board meetings. A draft 2022 meeting schedule has been included in your materials. As a procedural note, the proposed schedule includes two adjustments that will require a suspension of the board's bylaws. First, the regular meeting that would normally be scheduled for October 6th and 7th will instead be moved to September 29th and 30th out of respect for those who intend to observe the Jewish holiday Yom Kippur on October 5th. Second, the board's August 22 and December 22 meetings will be hosted at UW comprehensive campuses rather than the Board of Regents office. This would mean up to six meetings will be held at UW institutions during 2022 two more than specified in our bylaws, which editorial I would say is a great thing. As a reminder, a suspension of the bylaws requires an affirmative vote of two thirds of the total members of the board. Regents, may I have a motion to approve resolution 212? Well, Saffold. Thank you, Regent Saffold, may I have a second? Second. Excellent, any discussion on the calendar? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Now we'll move on to item 11. Next, we have the annual elections of officers of the board. The bylaws of the board specify that officers of the board are elected at the annual meeting held in June and hold their offices for one year until their successors are elected. Terms of office begin immediately after the June meeting. We will elect officers in the following order. President of the board, vice president of the board, secretary of the board, assistant secretary of the board, trust officer, assistant trust officers. If there is only one nominee for an office, the election is held by a voice vote. If there's more than one nominee for an office, the election will be by ballot. I propose that we follow the customary practice of the board, which is to start with nominations for an office. Please try to limit your nominating and seconding remarks to three minutes or less, which I know is difficult for this board. At the request of several regions following nominations for an office, regions will have an opportunity to pose questions to the candidates. Following the discussion, I will ask Jess to distribute and collect ballots. 
after Jess, our executive director, call, uh, 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 collects the ballots, Megan will audit and verify the ballot count, and I will announce the results. To be elected, a nominee must receive a majority of ballots cast. If no nominee receives a majority of votes after the first ballot, balloting will be repeated as many times as necessary to obtain a majority vote for a single candidate. Our first election is for president. As a reminder to all the regents, the duties of the president are as follows. To lead the Board of Regents on all matters. To chair the board and the executive committee. To set all standing and special committee compositions. To lead with the system administration and president, all of the UW system staff to represent the Board of Regents before the governor, the legislature, and the general public, to sign all contracts and diplomas for all system contracts and graduates, and finally, to serve as chief spokesman for the UW Board of Regents with national, state, and local media, business organizations, and the citizens of the state of Wisconsin. At this time, nominations are now in order for the Office of the Board of Presidents. And with that, do we have a nomination for president? Regent Jones. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. I nominate Regent Michael Greeby to a one-year term to the office of the board president. I've known Michael and his family both personally and professionally for over 30 years. Currently, Regent Greeby is chief legal officer of Aurora, Advocate Aurora Health, he provides counsel to the Advocate Aurora Board of Directors, Office of the CEO, and the Executive Leadership Team. Advocate Aurora has annual revenues in excess of a billion dollars. Prior to joining Advocate Aurora Health, Michael had a career of more than 20 years at Quarles & Brady, a Milwaukee-based law firm of approximately 475 lawyers. There, he served as chair of the Business Law Practice Group and a member of the firm's Executive Committee. Michael was appointed to this board in 2015. Since that time, he has spent time on our audit committee, business and finance committee, committee on student discipline and other student appeals, and six years as a member of our executive committee. In addition, for the last two years, he has served as vice president of this board. Throughout his career and his service on this board, he has amply demonstrated for all to see his leadership skills, his intellect, his abilities, his moderation, and as importantly, his humility as a servant leader. I have known and admired Regent Michael Grieby for a long time and can personally testify to his unimpeachable integrity. It is an honor to nominate him to this great office and I would urge your support. Thank you, Regent Jones. We have a nomination. Is there a second for Regent Grieby? Regent Bechtel. Um, I also rise in support of the nomination of Mike Grieby, our colleague and our elected vice president of the regents for promotion to the job of president of the Board of Regents. When I think of Michael, I'm thinking about experience, temperament and philosophy. Um, as, as Mike just noted, um, Michael's experience as the general counsel of the largest health care provider in this state, I think serves well and is translatable to leading the largest education uh, system in the state. Um, he has chaired multiple committees. He's rotated throughout uh, with the UW system here. I think he's prepared and ready to lead. Uh, Michael also is on the board of directors of independent high school. So it kind of brings in that uh, K-12 and other experiences. Uh, and if you really want to see Michael warm up and get a little misty eyed, ask him about baseball. Uh, Michael is a coach and mentor as he has been for many years uh, with baseball. Uh, here in the greater Milwaukee area. And uh, it, it's just, you just see that side of Michael that we don't normally see here. He's a pretty buttoned down guy, uh, but he really has a passion for youth and education and the transformational uh, work that's done not only in education, but also in coaching. Mike's temperament uh, makes him uniquely qualified. I think that's an attribute that Ed Manny Deeds uh, has as well. Uh, Mike has impressed me with his thoughtfulness 
Uh, there's been references today to folks who've mentored other regions as they come onto the board. Mike has been a mentor to me and has always been kind and thoughtful and taken time to listen to me and kind of help me kind of learn the ropes as a region. I do appreciate that. He has an ability to listen. Uh, he has an ability also to talk with others through ideas and to incorporate those ideas in the outcome uh, that, uh, uh, that results. He's got a low key steady style, which I think serves us very well as we kind of enter into these continuing turbulent waters. And his philosophy about board president, I think is the right one. Mike is not seeking to be our president because someone asked him to do this or due to any outside influences. He's really thought about this and he's put in the time and effort as our vice president which I think is an important just from a governance standpoint to serve in that role and then move forward and step forward into the president's role. Um, he knows the time commitment, he knows the hassles, uh, and he's willing to be our voice and to lead us. Uh, he served side by side with Drew and I think has learned on the job. Um, and Mike has relayed to me that his philosophy in the role is to be a servant leader, as, as Regan Jones indicated. He wants to facilitate, he wants to encourage more discussion and exchange of ideas by the regents and to have us take on more of a policy direction rather than kind of checking the box on compliance, which is something that I really welcome. So we're lucky, we're blessed. We have two great choices here today uh, between Mike and Ed. And we're gonna have an excellent president either way. Um, I came to this decision as I considered my colleague and I concluded, you know, Mike has one year left. He served for six, he's got one year left, it is a one year term. And I think um, uh, for all those reasons, I'm gonna be supporting Mike uh, when I get my ballot. And I hope that uh, we can all give Mike the chance to lead us for the 21, uh, 22 term. Thank you, Regent Bechtel. Regent Grebe has been nominated for the Office of Board President. Are there other further nominations for the Office of the Board of President? Regent Walsh. Thank you, Regent President Peterson. I'd like to echo what my colleague, Regent Bechtel, just said, how lucky we are to have two such qualified and motivated individuals who want to serve as our president. That's saying something about both of them, given the time demands of the job. And I think Regent President Peterson would gladly attest to the truth of that statement. Change is an overriding constant in the UW system, and it's seldom orderly, but it always demands our attention. We have to adapt to it, welcome it, and not run from it. We've proven we can do this across campuses, administrations, and regions. The past year of our rapid COVID response is only one proof. I'd like to commend Senator Roth for his thoughtful and provocative document about the future of this system. Some of the changes he proposes might be viewed as radical but no one at this table is afraid to discuss them. This document illustrates that change cannot be avoided. And in fact, it's completely necessary if we are to shape a UW system that's going to be robust and serve all of our constituents, students, faculty, staff, taxpayers, and Wisconsin business and industry. It's going to take persistence, passion, and a lot of listening. As Senator Roth's report suggests, the board and the system cannot simply continue on with business as usual. I agree with that sentiment, which is part of the reason I'm nominating Ed Many Deeds for president of this board. I know Regent Many Deeds wants to bring about this robust discussion at the table. He's a champion of what this system stands for, the value of public higher education in this state and the ability to transform lives. He's actually one of the most senior, longest serving regents, having served a previous seven year term. And I've occasionally asked myself if I would be prepared to do that if asked. I marvel that he said yes, knowing the tough issues we have to tackle and the time commitment that's necessary to serve well. He was co-chair with former Regent Eve Hall of a task force advancing diversity in the system, mm -hmm. recommendations about which we have much work to do. Finally, when I look around this table, I see colleagues, not partisans or enemies. I know Regent Many Deeds feels the same way. He nominated Regents Peterson and Grebe for the second year of their leadership positions in 2020. Regent Grebe has been an outstanding, dedicated member of this board, to which I owe much for his mentorship. 
Whether he or Regent Many Deeds wins this election, I and every person at this table will support and work with our new president because that's who we are. Thank you, Regent Walsh. Seconds. Second. Regent Cologne. Thank you very much. You know, as been said, this is a very difficult decision. We have two incredible candidates that are very committed to this institution and will do a great job. Today, my vote is for Regent Manning Deeds. I see him as an individual that's very hardworking, very humble, and very smart. I find him to be very thoughtful and deliberative in conversation and also at the board meetings. I'm really impressed by his experience having spanned three governors in his service as a Board of Regent. I also am impressed that uh, he's a former graduate and the passion and commitment he brings as a result of that experience. I'm also very impressed by the priorities that he has shared with me. The fact that he wants to listen, collaborate, and co-create the future with his colleagues on the board, the president, the faculty, the provost, the chancellors. I think this is a great rep, uh, recipe for success where we can get buy-in, elicit creative ideas, and ultimately execution of moving this institution forward. He also wants to build and support on the great work done by President Thompson to ensure that all of our students come back to campus safely and that they get the experience that they truly desire here at the University of Wisconsin. I also, he also talked about equity, diversity, inclusion as that being one of his goals to bring this to the whole system. The way uh, Regent Manadeeds listens, connects, respects, and has empathy for others, I think is gonna make them successful with that specific goal. Uh, for this reason, I'm supporting Regent Manadeeds as a president of the regions. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Cologne. Regent Ed Manadeeds has been nominated to be president. Regents, I will ask additionally if there are any nominations for president. Are there any further nominations for president? Hearing none, I would invite folks to make any comments or ask any questions of our two candidates at this time. Regents. Regent Atwell. I just want to add my voice that uh, I want to thank both of you for being willing to undertake the responsibility. And I want to assure you, each of you, you'll have my support in that office. I deeply admire your commitment. And uh, I guess at this table, Drew's probably the only one who really understands what all that means. Um, you know, in the run up to this uh, election, um, I've heard a number of comments from fellow regents that we don't want this organization to be politicized. And um, I want to put some nuance on that, at least from my point of view. I think what we mean is we don't want it to be as divided and bitter as the politics are uh, across our state. Um, I guess we're justly regarded as a battleground state. And uh, this body has, I think, the responsibility and the opportunity not so much to be apolitical, but to be effective in uh, working together for the things that unite us. I would say we are a derivative political body in that we were each appointed by a governor from a political party. And I don't think we're nominated to this board by that governor unless we are broadly aligned with the convictions of that governor. And we are each subject to legislative review and confirmation. And I want to add that uh, I've heard comments in the last couple of weeks that the governor shouldn't do this, the Senate committee shouldn't do that, and this and that. And I, I don't know all the statutory stuff about all that, but I have great admiration for people who stand for office and agree to serve as you two have. And the governor is the governor and the legislature is the legislature. And if we don't like it, we can do something about it. 
Um, you know, it's odd to be a region. One of the most odd things on this board, and I've been on it four years, is our statutory responsibility for all the things that go on across the many locations of this university system, this great university system. Our statutory responsibility is extremely broad, but we don't control the money. We have say in its allocation and we have influence over the money, but we don't control the amount of state money that goes in here. And it's pretty clear that in the coming uh, period, um, this board will be a majority of Evers appointees at some point, maybe now or is, um, and that the legislature is broadly controlled by the other party. So in that context, I do wanna ask each of you to address two questions or a twofold question. There's much that it unites us, I know that. I, I know that with each of my fellow regents, I know it with each of you. But how do we live authentic respect and diversity without denying our diverse political and ideological perspectives, which are quite real? And how do we effectively do this in a state that is bitterly divided along political, ideological, and geographic lines? So that's sort of the general first part of the question. And then the second is, um, as this board is tilted more toward Evers appointees, Governor Evers appointees, how can we engage more effectively with a legislature that is controlled by the other party? Um, so, because I think that's the crux of, of how do we best fulfill our responsibility and the passion that we all have and that I know both of you have. So if you would please for me address that complicated uh, twofold question. Thank you. So as the presiding officer, um, why don't I recommend that we have Region Manny Deeds take that first question, then it will be followed up by Regent Greeby, and Regent Greeby will take the second question and follow it up with Regent Manny Deeds. Does that sound reasonable? So the first question in a re restatement has discussed your views as it relates to diversity across political lines. Have I got that about right, Regent Atwell? And since I got to say whatever I want, I'm pretty sure you gentlemen will be able to say whatever you want. But yeah, in a state that's bitterly divided, uh, how, do, how, do we, how do we function effectively as a group in this environment? Try to, let me try to answer that <clears throat> with a kind of a statement about- Can you lean into that a little bit? Can you lean into the mic, please? How's that? Great. Okay. So, from the very beginning of my existence, I've come into the world with a, a father who is a member of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and a mother who is Italian and Polish. And, and, and that was uh, different, two different cultures coming together. So I think I was born to deal with that situation. And I'm just saying that by way of my experience in life. Everywhere I've gone, everywhere I've been, I have had a different upbringing and a different uh, way of living than some people and then again not and i have had to throughout the course of my life accept other people and they've had to accept me and i've had an experience in living life of 70 years of doing that bob i have uh, come to know people that thought totally the opposite of the way i thought or felt about issues or things and have come to understand why they did that that there was a reason for that and that they were not bad or wrong for thinking differently than I do, but simply that they had a, a reason for doing it and they had a different perspective. That's, that's, uh, that's a lifetime of taking me to learn that and it was a hard lesson, it really was, but I think I've come to the point now where I, I understand that we do have differences of opinion and that we should accept them and that we can grow from that and we can talk to people and find out why do they think this way? What is their rationale? What is their perspective? Why are they coming and saying something that I don't agree with? And maybe that caused me at some point in my life to rethink the position that I had. Maybe that caused me to think that I didn't know everything like I did at one point in life, many, many, many years ago. Uh, so I think that I am ready and prepared to deal with the diversity of thought regarding political issues, regarding life issues, regarding issues that this board may face. I'm ready to listen. 
I'm ready to learn, I'm ready to understand, and I will do my best to do that if I have a question or I don't understand or want to know more from each one of my colleagues that I respect uh, so much. You, you won't believe how much I respect all the knowledge and commitment to this system that sits around this table. And so I'm willing to do that. I've learned how to do that. And I think one other thing that has uh, prepared me for learning about different things are my three daughters who, who taught me how to be, I guess, uh, more emotional, more willing to speak, more willing to listen. And, and so that's how I would answer your question. Thank you, Regent Manny Deeds. Regent Greeby. Um, uh, first of all, I would uh, agree with uh, Regent Many Deeds' self assessment that he listens unquestionably. Um, and I'd say something, I guess, similar um, in terms of how uh, the role of board president can help us be united in our approach. Depending on your personal family or faith tradition, one of the things that some of us are taught is the admonition to listen first, speak slowly. Uh, I think that that's very good advice for, for anybody who's going to be in this role. Uh, you heard uh, Drew describe uh, the role of the board president. The role of the board president is not to impose his or her will on the rest of the board of regents or on the system. I believe it's the job of the board president to facilitate discussion and try to arrive at consensus, especially on difficult uh, issues. That involves listening to people around this table. It involves listening to chancellors, listening to other members of shared governance, uh, listening to members of the public. Um, you know, I, I'm reminded, I guess, of a story um, uh, or, or a comment that was made to me a few years ago by one of our uh, provosts. Um, for his sake, I'm not going to identify him right here. Um, but I was having a candid conversation with him uh, about my observation that so many people outside of this table um, view members of the board as really being political actors. Um, and it was my observation that I didn't think we were. Um, and he made a comment to me that has stuck with me. He said, you know, one of the things you need to remember about each of you is that to the outside world, the first thing that people see is a great big badge that has the name of the governor who appointed you on it. And sometimes that's all they see and that's all they know. And you need to understand that. I thought that was really a uh, very prescient uh, observation. But when we're around this table, we take those badges off. Um, and I, in my experience, it doesn't matter whether we have people with different badges or people who almost all have the same badge. Um, that shouldn't be a part of what we do. Um, I guess the last thing I'd add is, uh, I think that this body has an opportunity to be a real example to our state, uh, to the citizens of our state, uh, and uh, maybe to some other um, decision-making bodies of how to behave collegially, how to respect one another's views, how to listen, how to compromise, how to come to a position that is the best position, what is the best thing for the University of Wisconsin? In my experience, that's the only question we ought to ask and answer, and in my experience, it's almost the only question anybody around this table ever does uh, ask and answer. Uh, it's one of the reasons I'm so proud to be a part of this body. So I think I get to go first on your second question, which if I understood it correctly, uh, is how do we effectively engage with the legislature? Um, I'm kind of inclined to ask if I can defer to Ed to go first, but I think he'll decline uh, my, off, my offer there. Um, that's, I mean, Regent Atwell, you've asked a tough but really important uh, question. And I think it's, there's, it's a question that probably um, mandates some delicacy uh, in how we talk about it. Um, one of the surprises to me during my time uh, on the Board of Regents has been uh, the lack of the shared enthusiasm for the University of Wisconsin system among some other uh, constituencies. 
Uh, I know everybody around this table is remarkably proud of what this institution means to this state. Governor Thompson talks frequently about the fact that this is the most important institution in the state, period. It's the great, greatest economic uh, driver. Uh, it has the most effect on people as individuals, from students to families to faculty members to other members of shared governance to all of our employees. There's no institution in the state of Wisconsin that matters more uh, as a state institution than this one. Um, we need to demonstrate and advocate uh, for that and get across the idea that a dollar spent on the University of Wisconsin generally or at one of the campuses is a dollar well spent that will pay great dividends. It's a very difficult question. I think it's a matter of continuing to make the case and ask others to make the case on our uh, behalf. People expect the Board of Regents to be advocates of the University of Wisconsin. Why else would we be here? We need to engage uh, others to help that and make that case for us. Reby, read your mandates. Thank you. So I'll try to, to do this, uh, understanding your question. How do we engage uh, the legislature? And uh, so let me give you an example of what we're doing in Eau Claire. We have uh, in Eau Claire a, what's called the Triple Valley Transformation Project, and it's a it's a uh, group of co-chairs that that uh, and I'm included there, trying to figure out a way to make the the Triple Valley a more welcoming place uh, to to fight racism and and uh, people that are not traditionally represented. And so as part of that project, we met with local legislators, all of them not of the same party. And, and I found that if you're transparent in talking to people, and if you're willing to open your heart when you're talking about a certain thing, and let them see that this isn't just a statement, it's not just a position, it's not just something that someone told you to say or something that you heard someone else say, it's what you believe that you can, you can create a, a, a communication channel with someone who may be of a different party, who may have voted differently on different things, who lives in your area, who at, at some point then does the same thing to you, opens their heart and puts down their guard and says, I really don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Can you help me? And, and we've had those discussions. And, and uh, I've learned that that that's the best way to deal with people who may not know you, who may not understand you, who may not have an idea as to uh, what the issue is, is to be transparent and open your heart and expect that they will believe you. And, and I think if you do that in a way that, that they can tell you're communicating honestly with them, that they'll respond. Uh, it's that, it's that way in my line of work. It's that, that way in, in, uh, the various things that I've been involved with lately. It's that way with this group. Uh, we're not a political body when we sit down around this table. We all have to, to be able to speak what's in our mind and in our heart, and we all have to accept it so that we can, we can come to a, a consensus about what we are standing for on a particular issue and convey that then to those people that are making decisions that impact us financially or policy-wise in the capital. And I think I think we can start, and I have to say that our current president and vice president have made those connections and have done those things. I think they don't realize, or maybe they do, but that's how they operate. And I think, I think if we follow that lead, we can do that also. Hope that answers it. Thank you. Thank both of you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Regent Manadeets. Other comments or discussion related to our two candidates? Regent Klein, and please use the mic. Thank you. I'll echo what other regents have said that we're lucky to have two um, very thoughtful, very humble servant leader candidates, and I appreciate that. Um, I've had conversations with both of you, and I, you know, I know you both to be good people. Um, I, you, I think I've tried to say to me, and Regent Grebe, you said it well just now, the state of Wisconsin, the, 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 the benefit that this university system is to the state, state of Wisconsin is 
is um, the primary reason that I sit on this Board of Regents. And um, we took a little bit of a hit with the search, the failed search. And, um, and you know, there's, we're all disappointed. Um, but now um, we were lucky, and I, I mean, maybe lucky, maybe just, you know, Drew, Drew did, did hard work to get it to happen, but we were very lucky to have Governor Thompson take the presidency. Because in my mind, um, there's probably no better known figure in the in the country that comes from Wisconsin than Governor Thompson, and he elevated he elevated the position, and that to me was centrally important because I believe the University of Wisconsin is the finest educational system in the country, and we want to remain that. So my question is twofold. How, for both of you, how do you how do you ex how do we execute a search, which we'll have to do in the upcoming couple of years? Um, how do we continue to elevate the position of president and of our reputation nationwide? Because I believe that's important. And secondly, how do we engage in a strategic dialogue? Um, you know, people have mentioned Senator Ross' proposal. How do we how do we react to that? Um, uh, you know, do we call a special meeting? What What is to happen around those two things, which I find to be very, maybe they're tactical, but they're very important. So I'll ask, how will you approach those? I believe we'll start with Regent Manny Deeds and just a restatement of the question is, how will you handle the next search for the system president? How will you preserve and advance our UW system reputation? And what are your views on having strategic dialogues going forward. Regent Klein, do I have that right? You got it, thank Very you. Very good. Ed. All right, so the the search for the next president of the system, I think, uh, has to be uh, inclusive. It has to be uh, the shared governance model. It has to include the, the members of not only the regents, but the, the chancellors, the faculty, the staff, the students, all our shareholders, people that are involved in the uh, in the uh, system and our partners with us at some level of the search. I think that uh, if we do that, and if we start off by speaking to those groups about what it is that they would like us to, to find in a president of the system and consider that and then uh, get the search started, uh, I believe this summer, because last, last year at the end of the search, we were advised by the people that were helping us with that, uh, that we should wait a year and it's it'll be a year very soon. I think it's important that we start that search because it's gonna take some time. If we wanna do it right, it's gonna take some time and it's gonna take a lot of effort and it's gonna take a lot of discussion and it's gonna talk, take a lot of shared governance to complete successfully. So that's how we do that. Uh, how do we elevate the president of the system position? I think, I, th I don't think we need to do that. I think it is, it is a position that is uh, respected. It is looked at as being very important throughout the state. I think it depends upon the person that we have. The example before us, Governor Thompson, uh, is is that of an amazing leader, of someone who can excite people about issues, of someone who gets people engaged. And that's, I think, the person that isn't in the position is the one that elevates it. So I think we have to pick the right person. Uh, as far as uh, dialogue on what we need to do, I think we do need to maybe have a special meeting of the regions to talk about policies and and what our goals are moving forward. I think that would be advisable. Uh, a meeting when we could just focus on those specific policy issues specifically after we perhaps get a group of uh, regions together that can put some thought into what would be uh, areas that we should consider policy changes are maybe preparing and making more policies to cover those issues and then have the entire board sit down and discuss because I like to hear everyone's perspective. You all have unique perspectives and ideas about things and we need to hear them. We need to consider them and we need to build a consensus and that's the way I think we should approach that problem, Regent Klein. It's Regent Grebe, same question. Um, <clears throat> I agree with a lot of what Regent Manydeed said. Um, clearly, we need to uh, have a search committee that looks more like a traditional search committee. I don't think there's any question uh, about that. Uh, recently, um, 
Professor Dolan of UWM, uh, well, during the search and then again recently in an in a interview, uh, made the observation that the nature of the search committee the last time uh, created uh, a lot of bad feelings that probably made it very difficult, if not impossible, to conclude with a successful search. I think she's right. Um, and I think that the search committee next time needs to be much more uh, uh, inclusive. Uh, I think that's a fair word. I agree that I think we need to start that uh, process promptly. Uh, our advisor said we should wait a year or more, um, but I think it's time to start it uh, this um, summer. One of the things that I, I do hope that we do again, uh, that we did last time, uh, while there was obviously a lot of controversy uh, and uh, anger, um, as I think Professor Dolan said about the makeup of the committee, we did spend an awful lot of time talking to various shared governance uh, bodies. Um, we uh, met with the chancellors, uh, the provosts, uh, the uh, student uh, success uh, group. Uh, we met with student government. Um, we met with uh, faculty on a couple occasions. Uh, we met with academic staff. Um, we met with university staff. Um, we met with tribal leadership. Uh, we met with the Diversity Council. Um, and one thing I'd say, um, re regardless of what happens today, I would encourage us going forward to do that again. One of the things that came out of that as we, as we listened um, is that it had a dramatic effect on the prospectus or essentially job description that we put together and gave to our search firm and said, this is what we want. Um, so the search committee came up with a draft. It, we received copious amounts of uh, um, uh, input, um, which was surprisingly not inconsistent. Um, there was a pretty, there was a pretty um, common view of what people wanted in the next president. And one of the things we learned was we should champion the Wisconsin idea more because it's a great marketing um, opportunity. And I'll come to, back to that in a moment. I would hope that we would do that again, because I think there was great value uh, uh, in that. Um, in terms of how we elevate the position, uh, I'd maybe say three things. Uh, one, I think Governor Thompson has helped us do that because uh, he has uh, a positive uh, notoriety and his, it, he's a well-known person uh, and he's brought attention to the position. I think that's good for us. Um, the second thing I would say is uh, we, should, we should not be humble about what we're looking for here. This is a great honor for somebody to be the president of our system, uh, and we should treat it that way. And we should expect people to, uh, who are applying and interested to treat it that way. Uh, and then third, what I mentioned just a moment ago, um, focus on what makes this university so great. And part of that is the Wisconsin idea. The, the, the understanding that we are motivated by the Wisconsin idea in almost everything we do is, I found, uh, very compelling uh, to people who are uh, interested in the position. And we should, again, not shy away from that. It's a spectacular part of who we are and we ought to embrace it. Uh, in terms of the strategic dialogue, um, uh, I do think we are uh, uh, ready to have uh, a board level discussion of a number of strategic uh, issues. Um, I think they're interconnected to some or a significant degree, uh, whether it's enrollment, online learning, funding, uh, focusing uh, what we do in making our campuses the best possible campuses that they can be, uh, diversity and inclusion, uh, issues. Those all, I think, are not entirely separate. Um, and I, again, I agree with Regent Many Deeds. We, we need to have uh, an opportunity for this board to come together to talk about those things and to make decisions on how we move forward. We need to engage with other constituencies, whether it's elected officials or others, as we do that. Um, but I guess I would add maybe two other uh, comments or thoughts. One, 
we need to have an infrastructure in place in this board in terms of governance that permits us to do that in a way that doesn't just end after a year. It's got to be something that we put together that is going to outlive any particular iteration of the Board of Regents because I don't think that these are all questions that can be answered in 12 months. So we need to have an infrastructure to make sure that that work continues and we're not starting it over again year after year after uh, year after year. Um, I said I had two things, didn't I? I'll send you an email with the second one whenever I remember what it was. <laughs> Question, Regent Klein. Other questions or comments from regions related to the office of the president? Regent Weatherly. Uh, thank you, Regent President. I, I have a statement, not a question, so you guys can relax for a moment. <laughs> uh, it has been more than two months since I learned that we are likely heading towards a contested election. I've struggled with my vote for some time. On the one hand, Regent Greeby is well qualified. He has served on the board for six years including the last two as vice president. Most everyone I have talked to within the system and our school speaks highly of him, particularly his leadership in the wake of the UW Oshkosh Foundation scandal. On the other hand, Regent Many Deeds is also eminently qualified. He is the longest serving member of region on the board with apologies to Regent Peterson, perhaps. Uh, he has served on or led almost every committee and is rightly respected throughout the system. We are, as many have said, very fortunate to have two regions that could ably lead the UW system. However, it certainly makes choosing between them difficult. I, as I have struggled to separate the two candidates in my mind, I remember my first in-person regent meeting. It was last July. We met on the 18th floor of Van Heys, where the portraits of the past region presidents are displayed. One of the portraits stood out to me. It was in the northwest corner of the room. It was an old picture of an African-American man. Without knowing more details at the time, I recall feeling proud that the Regents had elected a person of color in its nascent years. That image came back to me several weeks ago, and I decided to do some digging. I found out that the portrait was of Regent Edward Hales. He was elected as president in 1977 and again in 1978. For my fairly extensive research, that was the first time and the last time that this board has elected a person of color to lead the UW system. That was 43 years ago today. Put it another way, I was not alive the last time we had a president with the lived experience of being a person of color as a UW student, alum, or a regent. I am voting for Regent Many Deeds, not only because I think he will be a wise and impactful leader, but also because, I th I, because he brings the important experience of being a person of color and a lifetime of advocating for greater diversity and inclusion. Under his leadership, I am confident we will push ever more quickly towards fully expanding the beneficent influence of the UW system to all Wisconsin families. Thank you. Weatherly. Any other comments, questions? Is our discussion complete? Is our discussion complete? I'll call the question, if you will. Very good. At this time, I'll ask Jess to display and deliver ballots to each of our region members. Thank you for the civil discourse. This wasn't easy, but it was very, very well done.
Ganz ruhig. Yeah, I walked by him. <sighs> Regents, thank you for your patience, for your comments today. This is not an easy decision to make. I want to thank the nominators. I want to thank those who seconded. The most important thing that this board can do is to move forward in a bipartisan way. Our votes for president are 10 for Regent Ed Manydeeds, 8 for Regent Michael Greeby. Congratulations, Regent Manny Deeds. Just like to say thank you for your confidence in me. Uh, I'd like to thank Michael for the many conversations we had in the last several weeks. Uh, unlike, I believe, what some people thought was going on, we were having friendly and open discussions about the board and how we could better push forward, no matter which one of us was elected to this. And I, I really uh, got to know Michael and appreciate him, and I want to thank him and Drew for the last two years of excellent work. Uh, leading this board, and I hope to do uh, a fraction of the job that you both have done. Uh, I will promise all of you at, at this table that I will share with you, and I look forward to sharing with you, with, moving us forward. Uh, I want to share that responsibility with all of you, hear what you have to say, and work with you. I know that we'll do that. I want to share with Governor Thompson and the great staff at the system uh, working towards making things better, share with the chancellors, share with the faculty, the provost, the staff, the students, and the citizens of the state of Wisconsin, promoting and working for betterment of the system. So thank you very much. I'm very humbled and appreciative, and I wanna thank you. Now move on to our second office, the office of vice president of the board. If there's only one nominee for an office, the election is by voice vote. If there is more than one nominee for office, the election is by ballot. I propose that we follow the same customary practices for this position. 
I'll remind folks the duties of the vice president of the board are as follows to do whatever the president says. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. With that, I'll seek nominations for the office of vice president. Regent Bob Atwell, the floor is yours. Thank you, Regent Peterson, President Peterson. Um, I nominate Regent Karen Walsh to serve as Regent Vice President. Um, way back before the age of COVID, uh, Karen joined the board as one of, one of Governor Evers' first appointees. I was very quickly struck with her knowledge of the UW system, its campuses, the people involved uh, across the state. She has obviously gained this knowledge um, as, a, as, a, as a journalist who covered the system, as a longtime staff member, and as an engaged citizen who's passionate about the mission that we all serve. You know, when you work on a search, chancellor search, uh, it's a real opportunity to get to know people at a much deeper level. And uh, I had the pleasure of working with Karen on the UW Green Bay uh, Chancellor Search, along with several of the other regents, faculty, and staff. This involves a lot of time, discussion, listening, some emotion, some laughter, and uh, and and a lot of sharing. And in this in this process, I really got to see you know not just Karen's knowledge, but her leadership qualities exceptional leadership qualities. You know, I think to be an effective leader, knowledge and passion is kind of table stakes. She has that. But in that process and also in our other inter interactions, I got to see um, a number of these attributes, which I want to note. Karen is firm in her convictions and very open to other people. Um, Karen likes to remind me that she knows uh, she and I have profound differences uh, to which I regularly respond. I look forward to our first bitter battle. Um, and truthfully, I think we know we have differences and we will uh, perhaps have opportunities to, to discourse about those at some point in the coming years. But what I know is that the kind of uh, respect for people that Karen exhibits uh, regularly is, is a critical aspect of living diversity. Secondly, while she speaks her mind in a clear and timely manner, she's a great listener and is very thoughtful in discourse, even if it's by Zoom or on telephone, um, which I've had enough of. If you, if, uh, generally, it's so great to be back in person with everyone. Uh, third, she asks great questions. I think we throw that phrase around a lot, but I've heard a lot of Karen's questions that really made me think. Fourth, she's got the gift of having a little dose of humor uh, at the right time, which I think is critical to setting people at ease. And she works really, really hard on the things that matter to her and to others. So with that, I am proud to nominate Karen Walsh as uh, to be to serve as uh, Regent Vice President. Regent Atwell, we have a nomination for Regent Walsh as Vice President. Do we have any seconds? Uh, second, Weatherly, and I will save any comments in the interest of time yeah, to see if this is a, a voice vote. Weatherly, are there any other nominations for the position of vice president? Are there any other nominations for the president, right, president, <laughs> for the position of vice president? Because there's only one nominee for the office of the vice president, the election can be by voice vote. I'll call the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Congratulations, Vice President Karen Walsh. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I've said this before when I came on this board, um, obviously they were Walker appointees and some people said to me, oh my God, how are you going to deal with that? And I would scratch my head and think, what do you mean am I going to deal with that? Um, what I discovered when I came in the door was not only deja vu from being in a place where I used to cover the regions with my tape recorder, um, but also such intelligent, generous, 
dedicated people. Uh, and I, I never gave it a, honestly a second thought which governor appointed anyone because you're all so smart and so willing to help me. Two of the people that have mentored me so much in the past two years are the two gentlemen sitting right over here, President Peterson and Vice President Grebe. I can't thank them enough for involving me in, in, in how they made decisions. Uh, they, they really modeled for me what it means to lead from a position of bringing other people up with you. Uh, and I'm very dedicated to that. I also thank the chancellors for their support. Um, I look forward to working with you and your staffs. I'm excited to roll up my sleeves. Uh, and I, I, at this moment, I am so grateful that I transferred to the University of Wisconsin-Madison from Edgewood College at the end of my sophomore year. I think it's one of the smartest decisions I ever made. No offense to uh, my friends at Edgewood. University of Wisconsin has given my husband and me access to every opportunity that we could to make a difference, not only in our lives, but for the lives of people all over the state. And that spirit of accomplishment and generosity is what I think is gonna carry this board forward. I'm so humbled and honored um, to accept this position. I look forward to working with you all and maybe laughing on occasion. Thanks. Congratulations, Vice President Walsh. Now we will move on and have the election of officers, the remaining officers of the board. These officers can be considered at one time or as a slate. Incumbents of these offices are Jess Lathrop, Corporate Secretary of the Board, Sandra Cleveland, Assistant Secretary, Megan Waisley, Assistant Secretary, Sean Nelson, Trust Officer, Charles Saunders, Assistant Trust Officer, and Quinn Williams, Assistant Trust Officer? Wow, <laughs> your duties as General Counsel are limitless. Uh, are there any other nominations beyond these as a slate? Could I have a nomination to move them as a slate? So moved. So moved, Regent Greeby. May I have a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Regent Rye. Are there any other nominations? Are there any further nominations? At this time, I'll call the question. All those in favor of these officers signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. That was uh, worthy of a round of applause. Now I'll call on Regent Weatherly to read a resolution of appreciation to UW-Milwaukee as our host for this June meeting. Regent Weatherly. Uh, thank you, Regent President, and I will start since I have the microphone with thanking Michael Grebe. I called him on Wednesday to tell him how I was going to vote, and I won't share our discussion, but the first thing after I told him was not him thinking about himself, but him thinking about me. And our discussion for the next 10 minutes uh, was about me as a Regent and his advice to me as a Regent, and not for one second did he think about the impact that my vote would have on him. And Mike, I will always remember that phone call, so thank you very much. With that, whereas the members of the Board of Regents are pleased to recognize the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee as the official host campus for the Board's June 2021 meeting, and the Board is grateful for the generous hospitality extended by Chancellor Mark Money and the Panther community at this first meeting hosted at a campus since COVID-19 pandemic began, and whereas the Board appreciating here Appreciated hearing Chancellor Mark Money's presentation, the impact and relevance of an engaged top tier research university, and applauds UWM's accomplishments in this area. And whereas the Business and Finance Committee members received an overview of UWM's financial and administrative outlook with a focus on strategic initiatives provided by Vice President of Finance and Administrative Affairs, Robin Van Harpen, and whereas the Ready Committee learned more and more about UW Milwaukee's future focused research and industry partnerships that drive innovation, economic competitive, and whereas capital planning and budget committee members heard about UWM's capital outlook and how it will meet Wisconsin's needs into the future, and 
whereas the Education Committee thanks Provost Giannis, Johannes Fritz for his presentation that highlighted the student focused components of the university's 2030 campus planning initiative. And whereas the board was pleased to receive UWM's annual NCAA Division I athletics report from Director of Athletics Amanda Braun. And whereas board members are delighted to get a closer, were delighted to get a closer look at UWM's Connected Systems Institute, an exciting public private collaboration of research and development projects related to advanced industrial processes and manufacturers. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Regents hereby thanks UW Milwaukee for its in depth presentations, forward uh, thinking spirit, and its many continued con contributions to the UW system and the, to the state of Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Weatherly, and thank you, Chancellor Mone. Before we adjourn, do we have any Regents communications, petitions, or memorials other than uh, a quick uh, side from President Thompson? Let me share the floor with the President. Very quick. Uh, first, let me uh, thank Mike Reeby for doing an outstanding job. Uh, my first year as uh, as President, you did an outstanding job advising me. I thought you were an excellent individual, and I still do. And and uh, want to just say thank you to Mike, uh, to uh, Ed Menendez and to Karen Walsh. Looking forward to seeing how we progress forward. We got a great university system, I think the best in the country. And looking for your leadership to lead us to new heights. And thank you so very much for what you've done, what you're going to do even more importantly. So congratulations to both of you. A uh, third thing that I want to do is thank uh, Mark Morney, my good friend, and uh, a wonderful show. Uh, you know, I, every time I come down here on the University of Wisconsin uh, campus, I'm more impressed by what's going on and accomplishments, and I really want to applaud you, Mark, for your leadership. You make me proud to be able to call you a friend. And every time we talk on uh, Wednesday Chancellor's meeting, you're always the first one to stand up and offer advice and suggestions for the betterment of the whole university system. So thank you so very much. But the next thing I want to talk to you quickly about is my need to uh, have you individuals, if you got time and if you know some individuals in the legislature uh, that are close to you, this is a very critical time. And uh, I don't want you to go out of your way, but if you know some legislators, especially those on Joint Finance Committee, it would not hurt, considering they're going to take up the building program next week. And uh, I would like to uh, suggest, if you got the time and you know some legislator very good, and, and if you find out some information, please uh, let us know at the office what you found out, because we're, we're lobbying nonstop uh, between now and then next Thursday. And it's very, it's critical time. And the budget process, you know, you may think it's over. It's not. It's uh, now for the rest of the month of June. It's a critical time. They probably will not pass the budget until the end of June, and they like to get it done by July 1st. We don't know what the governor's going to do, uh, but we know that uh, the university has many needs. And if you could help out uh, by talking about the needs, especially in the IT area, I talked. Uh, Karen Walsh about it yesterday in the audit committee. We are, we are really wide open for hackers. And you've seen what the hackers have done to the petroleum system in America, seen what it's done to the meat system. Can you imagine with our CAG system and with the multiplicity of servers, and anybody that's been involved in IT knows that that's how they get in is through all the multiplicity of servers, and we don't have a, that secure. So I would appreciate that you let the legislators know we need money for IT, we need money for our buildings, and we need money in the budget. Very important. So if you let, let me know what you find out, I'd appreciate it. I thank you. I don't expect you to become lobbyists. I don't expect you to spend a lot of time on it. 
But if you know a legislator really good and he or she has, uh, <laughs> has uh, been befriended by you in the past, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't hurt to remind that person that you're on the Board of Regents and that you've done a lot of things for that individual to get elected and you would like to have not a payback, but uh, a opportunity to grow Wisconsin. And always remember, the University of Wisconsin is the best economic engine we have in the state and we gotta keep uh, pounding that home. We're transparent and please tell the legislators, we are very much in the throes of changing the university for the better and for serving the people. And as I've always said, it's the Wisconsin idea expanded. When there's a problem in Wisconsin, we're there to help and be able to come up with ideas for the, for the solution, but for the good of the state of Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Thompson, thank you for the usual encouragement. Take it to heart, board members. Uh, any other communications, petitions, or memorials to share? Seeing none, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So moved, Regent Stanford Taylor, on your last meeting. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We stand adjourned.